Welcome to Nimmin Live, the number one place on the internet to learn about YouTube, network with other content creators, and have an awesome time doing it. My name is Nick, and today I'm answering your YouTube questions, but I also have a huge announcement that I'm going to share with you as well. So you want to make sure that you're sticking around for that. But um, I do want to let you know, um, just in case you're watching this on the replay, we have chapters available for this stream um, because this stream is driven by the questions that get asked during the stream. So because of that, if you have something you're trying to uncover or if you just want to kind of scan around and look for the information that pertains to you, which is going to be a lot of it, then um, you can go ahead and check this chapters in the description. Or, of course, you can go right along the bottom of the player where you're watching this on YouTube right now. Um, but in addition to that, um, I also want to let you know that this stream is brought to you by TubeBuddy, which is the number one tool for YouTube content creators. TubeBuddy will help you optimize your videos for discovery. TubeBuddy will help you find great video ideas to make videos about. TubeBuddy will help you with all kinds of things related to your YouTube channel. They have 90 different tools that will help you with your YouTube channel. So if you're a content creator, you should be using TubeBuddy. I'll put a link to them down in the description, or you can go to TubeBuddy.com slash Nimmin, and you can see what TubeBuddy can do for you because they have a free trial, and they also have some forever free features as well. In addition to that, the stream is co-brought to you by StreamYard, which is the live streaming platform that I use to stream this every single Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern. And the reason that I use StreamYard is because it does all the heavy lifting for me in the cloud. So I don't have to have a strong computer to use it. Um, it ensures that my stream is rock solid. And if I have a technical problem on my end, StreamYard actually holds the stream open for me. But in addition to that, StreamYard makes it easy to put graphics on the screen. They make it easy to bring guests onto the show, all kinds of awesome features like that for live streamers. So if you're a live streamer, I encourage you to check it out. They also have a free trial and you can find that at StreamYard.com. Or again, I've got links to that down in the description as well. So. With that out of the way, I have some announcements or I have an announcement that is pretty massive um, for us as content creators. Not like with, with this channel, not that big of a deal. All of you that are hanging out in here that are like trying to get into the partner program, huge news for you. So here's the deal. So YouTube, um, there's some leaked audio where the New York Times put out some information. Um, it was leaked audio from a YouTube meeting and that linked audio or leaked audio um, mentioned that they are going to be reducing the requirements to get into the YouTube partner program. So if you're somebody that's like, hey, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to trying to get into that YouTube partner program so I can get some of this ad money, um, that door is going to be opening up for you. I don't know exactly when this is going to be happening, but it is on the books and the way that it seems um, just through some of the quick research that I did before the stream today, it seems like this is going to be um, happening relatively soon. So I'm super excited about it. Make sure you stay tuned to the new segment that I do every single Friday so that as that drops, or actually when it drops, I'll, I'll make a video about it anyway, but just make sure you pay attention to that um, just so you can, you know, kind of stay up to date with not only that, but also things that are happening on YouTube. But in addition to that, they are also, how many people here that are, that are hanging out right now, how many people use shorts as part of the content that you put out on your YouTube channel? Or how many people have shorts only channels? You are also going to get hooked up with some of the information that was shared in this leak. So basically, through this leak that they shared, they are um, also going to be putting ads on YouTube Shorts as well. So again, I'm not sure exactly when this is happening, but the way that everything sounds, it seems like it's gonna be happening sometime in the near future. Um, but I just wanna say I'm super pumped up for that. I know a lot of you are really excited to, you know, start monetizing those ads in a more, you know, in a more efficient way, so to speak, just like we do with the long form videos. So I wanted to make sure that you are aware of that because that's a pretty big deal. And I know as, a, you know, somebody that's just getting started on YouTube, you know, cause I know a lot of you, you know, are just getting started or maybe you're still trying to, you know, Know, get into the partner program this is huge news for you um, in terms of you know your ability to come into that without having to meet the current requirements that are there so they're you know going to get dropped so really exciting news really pumped about that and I just wanted to make sure I short shared that right here at the beginning of the stream because that's a that's a pretty big deal Angie Atkinson what's going on hope that you're doing fantastic nice to see you in the stream today video for bosses nice to see you here as well Daniel Batal in the house Hope that you are doing awesome. My friend, Digital Expat, nice to see you in here as well. Calming Anxiety, Martin, hope you're doing great. 
video for Boss's Old Trish. Hope everybody's doing fantastic today. So I'm excited to answer your YouTube questions. So if this is your first time here, um, or if you are just joining the stream, I have a form down in the description where you can get your questions in there. We can get them answered on the stream today. So if you are new here, what we do is I just go through and I just answer questions for the next like two and a half, three hours. Um, I just go through and I answer your questions about YouTube, the problems that you're trying to deal with and trying to uncover solutions for. I try to help you with all that stuff and try to help you just get a better understanding of what it is that you need to do here on YouTube in order to in order to do better, so to speak. So, um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started and we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into that. But one thing that I do wanna let you know before we get into that, later in the stream today, as long as I don't just get into some flow and forget to do it, um, we are actually going to have a section where we are going to pull up a few channels and we're gonna brainstorm on how you can monetize those channels. So this particular thing, um, if we do it in this stream, this is going to be brought to you by Uscreen, um, which is a uscreen.tv, which is a online course platform that you can use for courses. You can also use it for exclusive content. Kind of like people use Patreon, you can do it this way, but it's much cooler. The display is much better. Your options are better. They have live streaming in there. They have apps you can use, all kinds of really cool stuff, but that's uscreen.tv. Um, but I'll share more about them later in the stream if we end up going and looking at channels and trying to give you tips on ways that you can actually make money from the content that you have. So it's not like a channel review. It's actually looking at your channel from the perspective of, okay, how can this person make more money from what it is that they're doing? So with all of that out of the way, I hope everybody's doing fantastic. Brad, Magic Flying Potato, hope you're doing great girl on her passport. Nice to see you in here. Old Trish, hope you're doing great. Doug Hooson, my man, hope that you are doing fantastic. Let's go ahead and get into it. So the very first question that we have today is from Retro the Emperor. Retro the Emperor says they upload one time per week or more. They um, do original music channel. The goal of the channel is to make money expressing themselves. And the question is, Viper, man about tech in the house. What's up, man? Hope that you are doing fantastic. Nice to see you in here. My man, looking forward to see you here in a few days. We got Vid Summit now in like 10 days. Super pumped for that, man. Looking forward to uh, to seeing you there. And for those of you that are not familiar with VidSummit, I've got um, a link to it down in the description below. It's going down in Los Angeles from September 27th to the 29th. Um, it's a conference for YouTubers. So if you are wanting to really take things to the next level, um, you definitely wanna be at VidSummit. But you can check that out in the description. But the question here is about their thumbnail. They say, how to make a thumbnail, which is an instant giveaway that your video is a song? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, there, you know, I really don't know the answer to that particular one outside of putting the type of song or the name of the song on the actual thumbnail itself. I know over at Creator Mix, that's what we do um, is we will put, you know, the actual, you know, like type of music it is that's on the, um, you know, we'll put that on the thumbnail just to help people identify that are into that type of music, that it is that type of music, right? So then it helps grab attention that way. So I would definitely kind of look at that in terms of, you know, some things that you can do. I would also just kind of hop on YouTube search and start looking around for uh, music, especially the type of music that you make and just kind of see how people are packaging it up. See how they are grabbing attention through what it is that they're doing. Some of those things, depending on the audiences that you're trying to reach, like for example, let's say that you are doing type beats and that's the type of channel that you're doing and you're making these for like rappers, for example. Well, in that case, one of the things that they do is they will, you know, search for different, you know, types of, you know, beats that they're making and all, or that they're, you know, wanting to rap to. And then the, a lot of those are easily identifiable through how they put the thumbnail to where they'll have a relatively simple thumbnail, but then they'll have some type of very unique type of character in the middle of that thumbnail or something like that to help. It's just kind of like a theme that kind of goes within, you know, that particular genre. So, um, so I really recommend that you do just look into um, those types of things to kind of help you uncover that a little bit better. How we got here, Genealogy says, love the idea of brainstorming channels for ideas on how to monetize. Yeah, you know, wanted to introduce something new. You know, everybody's doing channel reviews and stuff like that now. So I just wanted to, you know, just introduce something new, you know, because, uh, you know, there's, you know, people that can help you with that stuff. So I'm just trying to find these little things that I can carve out to try to help you in other ways, right? So we've got the news, you know, we got that out. That's already being copied, you know, by somebody else. Um, and then um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm about 90% sure we're gonna be doing it on this stream. Um, but if we don't do it on this stream, then we'll definitely be doing it on the next one. Um, we might just do it on this one. It's kind of like a test run and just kind of see how it goes. But, um, but that's gonna become um, a theme as long as people, you know, enjoy it and respond to it well. 
But uh, the next question that we have here is from King CMC TV. What's going on, man? Hope you're doing great. They do gaming content. The goal is to support their family and get monetized. And the question is, hey, Nick, how much is Daryl Eve's consultation for one-on-one -on -one and growing my channel um, or you? And what is the best way to contact Daryl? I know he's busy. Plus, I sent him a, P a DM on Twitter. Um, okay, so um, for him, I have no idea um, off the top of my head what he charges. I know that, um, you know, it, it definitely comes with a price. He's extremely knowledgeable on what it is that he's doing. Um, I would continue reaching out. Um, you can also go to channel jump start.com and um, there he has a form that you can fill out and uh, you know it's kind of like an application form to get into that particular program and I'm pretty sure I know at one point he was doing one-on-one -on -one calls I'm not sure if he's still doing that or not um, me I'm not taking on any clients right now um, but in terms of him um, you can you know you can definitely try to find those avenues to get in touch with him Ain't Newbie is our next question here. Um, they do Roblox gaming, let's play content. The goal of the channel is it's actually entertainment content. And really quick, um, I had some members come in. I want to make sure that um, I address you guys, Welcome let you know to the what you need to do next in terms of the next steps here. So um, what you want to do for semi-retired bomb, uh, Martin, who actually is just renewing, so he already knows the deal. He's already in the group. And um, Backyard Homesteader, what you want to do, um, first off, welcome to the Nimenati. Um, what you want to do is when you get the opportunity to, is you want to go to nimenvip.com. That will redirect you to our members only Facebook group. And if you fill out all the information on the way in there, um, then I can add you to that group once the stream is complete today. So if you can just do that sometime before the stream, you got you know a few hours before you need to do that. Um, but if you can do it before the stream is over today, then I can get you added in there before the stream or after the stream is uh, complete. Poke Rev, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. it says, um, just wanted to say hi and keep crushing it, bro. Thank you for that. And thank you for the kind words. Super, super appreciated. So the question here um, from, and this was from Ain't Newbie says how to deal with your video ideas being copied by bigger creators here's the thing this is always going to happen your video ideas are going to get copied your concepts that you come up with are going to be copied everything you do people are going to copy it and the, and the better you get at doing those things and coming up with those ideas the more and more people are going to copy you it's part of the gig and you just have to you just have to deal with it right some people lead some people follow so you just have to pick which one of those are you going to be you're going to be innovating trying to come up with new stuff or you're just going to be riding somebody's tails all the time trying to you know do what they're doing so um so when people are in your case because you know people are copying you now so because of that um just just embrace it as part of the gig. It's going to happen. People are gonna copy what your set looks like. They're gonna copy how you structure things. They're gonna copy your thumbnail styles. They're going to copy your video ideas. They're gonna copy your concepts. They're gonna copy everything about what it is you do, but rest assured, they can't copy you. And when they are here, right, because you're progressing through time, when they catch up to you here and they try to copy you here, guess what you're doing? You're, you're here already, so it's not that big of a deal, right? So just keep doing you, keep doing your thing, and um, and, and let them catch up to what, to what it is that you're doing. So um, as an additional part of this question, they say, as a quality slash quantity uh, monthly uploader, I've come up with super unique ideas for my videos. However, because my videos become evergreen and get into the six digits, bigger creators in my niche with 10 times more fame than me would see my videos and use them in their own channels with no credit. Oh, they're actually downloading your videos. It's definitely not a coincidence as I've contacted these YouTubers and they openly admitted to stealing my ideas and exploiting me as their business model. Wow. So that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. So when it comes to them downloading your videos, if they're just downloading them to re-upload them, then you can actually submit a copyright claim to them. If they're reacting to them, then it's likely that it's going to fall under fair use in some case. So you gotta be really careful there. Um, and if they are just taking the actual concepts, like, hey, um, in Roblox, I'm showing people how to do this particular thing and nobody else is doing that. And then they come in and they just start taking those, just, you know, you just gotta keep going, right? And as soon as you come on the radar, people will start identifying that. And people will start identifying that you will be the first in some of those things. So uh, so don't even, you know, don't even sweat it. Again, it's part of the uh, part part of the gig. Shark Scrapper says, copy your haircut. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So uh, next question that we have here uh, on the list is, uh, let's see here, Skip X. Skip X says they upload one time per week or more. Um, the type of channel is gaming video essays, analysis, critiques, and recaps. The goal of the channel is to make a living through my channel. Um, the question is, good morning, Nick. Um, good morning to you. Hope that you are doing fantastic and awesome. And if those of you are just joining us, when you saw the announcement thing that I put in the um, in the title, oh no, did it not transfer over? Hold on, because um, I updated the title 
and I'm not sure if it actually transferred over to YouTube or not about the announcement. It did. Okay. Yeah. So if you're here for the announcement, just one second, I mentioned it earlier, but I'm going to recap it again. I'm going to do that, you know, throughout the stream, um, just because it's really, you know, awesome information that you need to know, especially if you're just getting started on YouTube. Um, but the question here says, good morning, Nick. I've mainly been doing some game recaps since I had some success with them in 2021, but this year, not so much. So I've been considering going back to making essays on the games I play. Should I completely stop doing the recaps or only make them for really popular game series near a major release to funnel people into my channel. So this is where coming up with some type of content strategy is really important. And what a content strategy is, is essentially where you give purpose to everything it is that you do, right? So when you are, um, you know, putting out that particular type of content, then you're like, hey, okay, I'm gonna do these essays. So I'm going to, of course, reserve some time so that if something, you know, trending happens, that I can make an essay on that quickly. Um, and then that would be your, some, you know, hero content that would typically, you know, get in front of more larger audiences, bring more new people into your YouTube channel. And that would be the purpose of that content. Um, and then there's other things where, you know, you can put out content where you know it's going to do well, but it could serve a different purpose. Like, let's say, for example, that type of content might not necessarily get you in front of as many new people, but let's say you typically have higher ad rates on that type of content and you do it for the sake of, you know, getting higher ad rates. Let's say that um, for everybody else in here, just to make this relevant to everyone, let's say that you have a um, let's say you promote something like as an affiliate on your channel. Then in that case, you wanna make sure that you're putting in some of those videos as part of your upload cadence so that you can make sure that you're also filling the bucket of making sure that you have money coming in from your content as well. So when it comes to content strategy, the idea is to think about how can I um, take all of this you know, content that I'm thinking about and how can I intentionally release this content based on what this content, what this content typically does for my channel and the things that I want certain content to do for my channel, like these bigger videos that you're talking about. So um, so you definitely want to make sure that you're thinking about things in that way. But in addition to that, you also want to make sure that you're not just thinking about the content itself and the purpose of it, but also you wanna think about how you're going to be interlinking your content and handing people off from one video to the next and so on because you know, when it comes to content strategy, you have all that purpose, but if you can take, you know, one person from one video that serves one purpose and then to another video that either amplifies that purpose or serves another purpose, then, you know, they get to win by getting all the content that they want. You get to win by, by accomplishing your goals faster. So that's the idea when it comes to uh, that sort of thing. So hopefully that helps. Um, really quick, we had some super chats come in. Going to hit these. Um, we've got Learn Spanish super World. Chat. Says, um, hey, Nick. Uh, thanks for the super chat. Says, hey, Nick, my channel has grown to 70,000. I currently use the Yeti X. Do you recommend uploading to the Sure SM7B? Is it worth upgrading? Amazon's got a 55% discount. Um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. So um, I don't have a Blue Yeti. I've never used a Blue Yeti. Um, they're popular. A lot of people do use them. Um, I got this just because I was watching a lot of a lot of videos. And at the time, I was like really aggressive on the podcast, which I've been recording stuff for, by the way. So that'll be coming out again soon. But, um, but you know, I was like, okay, this is like a podcast type audio mic. I can use it for live streaming and, and doing tutorials and all that. Plus, you know, it's really famous in the podcasting world. So I was like, you know, let's get this and um, and just roll with that. And I've been extremely happy with it. I also have the Rode, Bro uh, the Rode uh, broadcaster. Um, that's also a really good mic as well. That's on the desk back here. Um, I've used it, uh, I think twice in this stream. And I had this problem with like breathiness to where in between voices, when I breathe or in between voices, in between words, when I breathe, the roadcaster I thought was the problem. It would just amplify those breaths. But I think what actually was going on is I have a cloud lifter in the signal here. What the cloud lifter is, is it gives the mic um, 20 decibels of clean gain, and it makes it louder by 20 decibels without introducing any additional noise or anything. And I think that that particular device might have been kind of amplifying the signal and messing up how the microphone was, you know, kind of coming into the roadcaster. I think that was what's going on. But anyway, um, in terms of feedback, like I, 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 I like this mic. I think it sounds good. Um, a lot of people, you know, use these, so I definitely recommend it, but I honestly don't know if based on your voice and how your voice sounds and how you like things to sound, if it's going to, you know, fit the bill for you or not. So since you are getting it on Amazon, get it, give it a shot, see if you like it. And then if you do, then keep it. But if you don't, then be like, okay, well, let me, you know, send this back to Amazon um, because I'm not, you know, happy with the, uh, not happy with the purchase. Next up, we've got Super Bit of Wander, Bit of Wander. Before we get into this, okay. So for those of you that might be coming in um, for the, you know, big announcement. Um, so one thing I wanna let you know, if you are a new content creator, um, you there has been a leak of audio of a YouTube meeting. And in this particular YouTube meeting, one of the things that um, was mentioned 
was that they are going to be lowering the requirements for the partner program, which means that you're not going to have to follow the same requirements that you currently do, which is currently 4,000 hours of watch time and 1,000 subscribers. At this moment in time, I have no idea what it is that they're gonna change it to, um, but this was just a thing that was leaked by the New York Times from a YouTube meeting. Um, in addition to that, they are also going to be monetizing YouTube shorts as well. So you're gonna be able to start seeing ads in your YouTube shorts, which means that if you are a shorts content creator or if shorts are a part of the content that you put out, then you're gonna be able to monetize those in a better way um, as well through YouTube ads, which is, a, which is a huge win, especially for people that have built their entire channels on YouTube shorts. Like they're gonna wake up one day and then be like, oh my gosh, I can get into the partner program, this is great. And then, you know, be able to start, uh, you know, getting uh, money from all of the effort that they are putting into their, uh, uh, putting into their content. So really quick, uh, we had a few channel members join here. Welcome to the Niminati. All of you, welcome to the Niminati. Um, thank you for that. So what you wanna do um, for all three of you, you want to go to nimminvip.com. I'm gonna pan it on the screen right here real quick. There it is right over right over here. Go to nimminvip.com. Um, that's gonna redirect you to our members only Facebook group. Fill out all the information on the way in. You can join as a person or a page. Um, it doesn't matter to me. Um, but basically um, when you go into that particular page, make sure you fill out all the information on the way in because that's how I verify that you're a channel member. Um, and then if you can do that sometime before the stream is over today, I will get you in there. Um, I'll get you in there as soon as the stream is complete. So uh, let's see here. So next up on our list, iFun Chris channel super says, you're helping me on my YouTube channel. Thanks. Thank you for that super chat. iFun Chris, I appreciate it, man. Thank you for your uh, continued uh, support by dropping the super chats, man. It's been, uh, it, it's awesome. Thank you. So um, let's see here. Next up on our list here, we've got morning game series made release. Okay, so we've got that one covered. Okay, so the next question that we have here is also coming from the form um, that is listed down in the description below. This is from the KMH family. KMH family says they upload one time per week or more. It's a lifestyle channel. The goal of the channel is to entertain, inspire, and put more love and positive energy into the world. That's cool. It's a mission I can stand behind. <laughs> That's awesome. The world needs that right now. The question is, hey, Nick, um, hope you're having a wonderful evening. I am. Thank you. I actually, you know, just sitting here with you guys, you know, having some coffee, answering some questions, you know, relaxing, listening to a little bit of rain hitting the ceiling. It's pretty nice and, and kind of like chill mode, but you know, but in a good chill mode. So yeah, having a great evening. Thank you. Um, we're about halfway done with our course. Would you recommend not mentioning it um, to Maya's community until... Um, so here, until we're completely finished with it or doing a soft launch or letting them know it's coming soon. Let them know it's coming soon. Let them know it's coming soon. Have a opt-in page where they can go and they can put in their email to be notified when, as soon as you launch. Um, let's see here. Um, do a soft launch coming soon. Hype don't around it. We get a lot of questions in our comments and emails that are directly related to topics on the course. Thank you again for being you and all of your energy, dedication, and the time that you give to others, Hannity. Thank you for the kind words there. So yeah, what you want to do um, is just go ahead and just start, you know, building it up. Let people know that it's coming and get that opt-in together so that you can send people there so that they can put in their email to be notified um, when the course actually goes live. And that'll help you also get a surge when you um, when you actually, you know, say, okay, we're open for sale now. Um, that will help help you, you know, kind of accelerate things when that happens. Next up on the list here, we got Stormy Sky Rail Productions. Um, hey, and really quick, um, before it's too late and I forget to mention it, um, if, if you're a tube spanner user, I want to remind you really quick to go ahead and get your notepads open if you don't have them open already. Um, if you're not a tube spanner user, I got a link to tube spanner down in the description below. It's a, it's a YouTube productivity tool um, that helps you in all kinds of different ways, social bio pages to interlink your, your account, script writing tools, all kinds of really cool stuff for you as a content creator. Um, so you can check that out through the link in the description as well, or just go over to tubespanner.com. Um, but I just wanted to remind those of you that are currently tube spanner users. So um, the next question here is from Stormy Sky Rail Productions, says that they do trains with some weather videos is the type of channel. The goal of the channel is to have fun and eventually make some money. And the question is, for about this, uh, for about the last week, I've been un unable to see others' community posts on my homepage. I can see them on my personal account, but not on my Stormy Sky account. I've checked the settings to see if something got unchecked, but I have been unable to find anything. Any suggestions on how to get notified when someone makes a community post? Um, I'm not sure in terms of them not showing them on your you know, main feed. I know that um, right now, 
Um, I actually just shared on Twitter two different versions of YouTube that are happening right now in addition to the other version um, that they have. Uh, one of them, you can see all the comments down below. Um, another one, you see the comments over on the side and down below. Um, and another one, the subscribe button's actually slammed over here by the channel name and the layout's just a little bit different. So they're definitely experimenting with some different things right now. And some of that might be, um, you know, where the community posts are showing up and all that. Cause I know they're always trying to fine tune things in order to put the right content in front of the right people at the right time that they're the most likely to respond to. So um, right now, if uh, you know you're not seeing those, then you know it could just be an experimentation mode in terms of you know they're just seeing if you know if you respond more to video content maybe or something like that. So um, let's see here. So next up on our list, we've got a career advice channel. Um, they don't have the actual channel name itself, but the goal of the channel is to sell courses and make money. And the question is, how do you add a trailer to your up upcoming live feed? So if you go um, and you schedule your live stream. Then after your live stream is scheduled, you go into your creator studio, which is the back end of your YouTube channel. You go into that creator studio. And when you do that, you go and you hit the live tab and then you're gonna see the scheduled stream there. Click into that. And then once you are in there, click on the customize option. I'm trying to like visualize this as I'm saying it. Click on the customize option. And then when you click on that customize option, um, if you scroll down the page, that's where you're going to see the option to add a channel trailer or, or sorry, and or redirect your stream um, once your stream is complete. Next up, we've got, uh, let's see, okay, we did that one already. Okay, next up, we've got Boney to Beastly. Um, Boney to Beastly says they do fit, uh, fitness content. Goal of the channel is to help skinny guys bulk up. Um, the question is, my channel is for a much smaller niche. Skinny guys um, within the male mus muscle building niche. Is YouTube able to figure that out? Is there anything that I should be doing differently? Yes. So in your case, um, YouTube will definitely figure out figure it out over time based on how people respond to the content, right? So it's gonna come down to like, if there's somebody that maybe is, you know, thin and they're watching a lot of content about how to bulk up or, you know, how to, you know, just get, you know, buff or whatever the thing is, then over time, YouTube's going to detect the type of user on YouTube that is watching that type of content by cross-referencing it with other content, a bunch of other things. So um, because of that, YouTube will figure it out, but you can help them out and make everything happen faster. So the way that you help them out, you help things happen faster is by getting the right people to respond to what it is that you're doing. So in your particular case, I would make sure that you're leveraging the four skinny guys thing um, in, in as many titles as that it makes sense for. So for example, if it's like, you know, how to bulk up for skinny guys, um, uh, how to, you know, get your arms bigger for skinny guys, how to get, you know, great abs while bulking up, for skinny guys, that type of thing. You know, even in imagery, um, like in your thumbnails, if you show like a before and after, show like a really skinny dude, you know, in the before, and then show a balked up dude in the after, those types of things, so that the skinny people that you're trying to reach, this is like a funny, weird, it just feels weird to talk about this, but the, the skinny people that you're trying to reach, um, when they see that content, they're gonna know it's for them, and that will also kind of cut out some of the people that might have clicked on just general fitness content that are already, you know, getting buffed up or something like that if they see that it is for skinny any people. So the idea there is to optimize the content. Neil, Urban Van Life, hope you're doing fantastic, man. But the idea is to optimize everything um, around the viewers that you're trying to reach. And if you do that correctly, then the right viewers are gonna be the majority of people that are clicking on it. Now that might impact you negatively initially because your audience won't be as broad in that particular case, but it's gonna help the system get a better understanding of who is the, you know, the, the right fit for your content. And then from there, you can start experimenting with different ways to go broad within the skinny, you know, within uh, the, the, you know, the group of skinny people that you're trying to reach and, and things like that. <laughs> Neil say wants to see me bulk up. Yeah, it's probably not something that you're going to see in this lifetime. <laughs> so the uh, channel name here is for uh, Math Bell. Math Bell uploads when they have time. Um, they have an educational channel. Goal of the channel is to give support to teachers and parents on how to support their young learners with elementary math topics. The question is, how do you think the new educational platform that YouTube is developing will affect those trying to become monetized or those already monetized if no ads will be shown to viewers? So it's not that no ads are going to be shown to viewers. It's that 
that people are going to have that option to make it a distraction free experience for, you know, for their education. So, you know, you and I, because we both do educational content, right? So in my case, I'm not going to turn on the distraction free um, option if that's how it all, you know, pans out. I'm not going to turn that on because that's not really the experience that, you know, I'm trying to have, you know, just my regular videos. If I were to put out like a master class or something like that on my channel, then in that case, that's where I might consider turning that on. So it's something like, hey, this is what you need to focus on for the next hour so that you can make sure that, uh, you know, you get all the information that you need without all those, you know, distractions trying to pull your attention away. Um, so um, in terms of, you know, it impacting educational creators negatively, definitely not. Um, but this is more for like, let's say that you are a university and you're putting out content or let's say you're putting out TED Talks and stuff like that. Um, then in that case, that's where you might want to use that particular that particular thing. Um, let's see here. Next up on the uh, list here. Premium Wrestling is the name of the YouTube channel. They do daily content. It's a wrestling channel. The goal of the channel is to make non-wrestling fans into wrestling fans. It's a challenge, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, the question is, when I started my channel, I didn't even get views, um, and then I went viral, but flatlined again. Then recently, I went viral again, but flatlined again. How do I maintain a viral status? Try to get an understanding of what made the original, the, the videos that went viral go viral. So videos go viral because people respond to them at an extremely high rate. So what you have to think about is you have to get into the psychographics of why you think people responded. So you'll see the numbers in your YouTube analytics in terms of, you know, hey, this is my click through rate based on these impressions. This is my average view duration, things like that. But in order to replicate some of that stuff, you have to get into the psychographics in terms of like, why do I think this was important to people that are into wrestling or not into wrestling that caused them to click on this? Um, you know, once they started my video, why do I think they stuck around for this Part, um, compared to other videos where they typically leave, um, you know, at similar places in the video, those types of things. So you really want to kind of roll up your sleeves, so to speak, and get into the nitty gritty of the videos and start really analyzing all aspects of the videos and why you think people responded the way that they did. And then you want to start trying to replicate that through future content. Now, doing this is more of a trial and error. So what you do is you look at the videos that performed, you come up with any theories that you have around why you think they, you know, responded well to it. And then you test that against new content. When you're testing that against new content, you're going to slowly start figuring out, okay, every time I do this, they seem to respond better. Every time I do this, they don't respond as well. And you're going to start being able to identify that. So one thing that can help you with this is you can start looking for patterns using the grouping feature on your YouTube channel. What the grouping feature is, is um, it's where you can actually group together your content and you can say, okay, here's a group of vid videos where I did this and here's a group of videos where I did this, which one typically performs better for that thing that I'm trying to track, right? Um, so you use that to kind of measure things, but then you use the theories that you come up with, you use new content to test those out until you fine tune things to where you have that really good understanding of what causes the people that YouTube is showing your content to, 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 to to tick, so to speak. Um, let's see here. Luna and the expats hope that you are doing fantastic. Saying got recommended by um, Neil Urban Van Life. Awesome. Awesome. Neil's an awesome dude. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the stream. So the cook and share says last week I had a sudden surge in suggested videos and then it went flat again. Any idea what they uh, what they are doing when that happens? So um, what could happen, and you can actually go into your traffic sources and you can see some of this. So you can see, you know, exactly, you know, where it ends up falling off, but you can also look at the videos and you can kind of sort by date range to uh, to make it, you know, more relevant. But what you can do is you can go look at the specific videos that you were pulling traffic from and see if you just happen to get attached to like a really strong video. And then maybe that video isn't doing as well anymore. And then that ended up kind of rippling down to you. Um, it's also possible that you were getting that traffic from a nice handful of videos. And then maybe somebody else put out something similar and people were responded to that one better and it knocked you out of like the next up spot for example and it ended up you know knocking you further down the uh you know the suggested column and it, you just don't have that um you know uh screen real estate so to speak to where people are seeing your stuff as much as before things like that um is what causes that type of thing paul peck drywall tube in the house what's up my dude hope that you are doing awesome um, but just keep in mind that, you know, that all of those types of things, it's all based on response. So, you know, if they, if your videos do, um, th this same exact things happen to me like tons of times over the course of my channel, but basically when you are, um, like when you do get attached to, you know, some very specific videos and they're high volume videos, like you can get tons of traffic from them. And then, you know, as soon as somebody comes along or another video comes along that it doesn't even have to be based on the same topic that you talk about or the same, you know, things that you share. But as soon as YouTube makes the connection that, hey, we've been recommending this next to this video and people are clicking on that more, then as soon as that happens, regardless of the topic, if they make that connection, then that video will end up being prioritized over yours. It's all about the viewers. 
Next up, we got semi-retired Bob. What's up, Bob? Hope you're doing. Uh, hope you're doing awesome. They do weight loss and fitness content. The goal of the channel um, is, of course, to make money, but spread the word about the lies we have been told for decades. Nice. Um, the question is, as you might remember, I had a photography channel. was stuck at 25 subs for long enough to stop when life got in the way. Sharp left turn. Um, I was just posting an update video for family and friends, and it got views. Long story short, four weeks later, I have 1.25 thousand views and 3.5 thousand hours of watch time. I've been rewatching all of your stuff, so I've got a good handle on most things. I know you're in Thailand, um, but is there a financial software you might recommend that works for YouTube? I feel I need to do that very soon. Thanks for all of the free education. So in terms of financial software to keep track of everything, you can just use QuickBooks for that. Um, that will, you know, that'll that'll take care of you being able to track everything that you need. I actually got an email from some guy that made a um, a piece of software that is financial software for YouTubers, um, but I haven't tested it yet or anything. I said, yeah, give me access to it. I'll check it out. Um, but I haven't, you know, tested it or anything like that yet. So I'm not going to like recommend it or, you know, I'm not going to say go look for it or anything like that because I really don't know. Um, one, the legitimate of it too. I don't know if it's, you know, good or not or anything like that. Um, the creator classroom says that, um, the type of channel says I should put you on the spot and let you tell everyone what my channel is about Canva tutorials. <laughs> the goal of the channel is to inspire people to become creative in Canva. And the question is I'm new to streaming. My problem is that I have some health challenges that pop up sometimes during my streams. The biggest one is my voice gives out sometimes earlier than what's planned or a migraine kicks in. How do I make adjustments and end early without feeling like I've let my audience down? First off, prioritizing your health and your well-being um, is the most important thing. Because if you don't prioritize that, it'll stack up over time and you'll end up not being able to serve the audience long term. So focus on, you know, making sure that you're okay, that you're, you know, in, in the right, you know, place and taking care of yourself. Focus on that first. Um, however, when it does come to this sort of thing, I have a similar problem. So I have, and you might have heard me talk about this in previous streams, but I have a um, I have a, a, an issue with my back. And what happens is sometimes during the stream, it's actually acting up a little bit on me today as well. But sometimes during the stream, if I just sit just a little bit wrong, then it'll start like really kicking in. It's basically a, a bald disc that hits a nerve. And what happened is that'll just keep digging me. So sometimes during the stream, you'll see me maybe make a quick jerk um, to kind of like, you know, adjust to it or whatever. But for me, I have, you know, little things that I do, you know, like I might move a little bit or I might play the rap video where you guys think I'm going to the bathroom, but in reality, I'm standing up and I'm just kind of moving my, you know, kind of stretching around, trying to get my back, you know, back in order again, um, you know, those types of things. So I would definitely have, you know, something that you can do to where you kind of put people on pause for a moment and then you can, you know, stand up and kind of, you know, refresh yourself if you can. But if it's something that just, you know, takes over and you're like, Hey, I, I can't stream for another minute. Um, then in that case, just end the stream and just let them know, say, you know, Hey, thanks. Thanks everybody for coming in. Um, you know, I hope that you got value out of this and I'm going to be streaming next time at blah, blah, blah. And in the stream, um, because when you start live streaming, for example, you know, people are expect this live stream to go for, you know, like three hours or so. However, if I was like, Hey, this stream after an hour, if I'm like, Hey, we're done. Then, you know, people be like, oh, OK, I thought this was going to be going on, you know, for like three hours. But OK, I'll just go find something else to watch or find something else to do. So it's not, you know, that big of a deal. So um, so I would definitely um, I would definitely, uh, you know, just prioritize your, you know, your well-being first um, and then, you know, and then worry about, you know, everything else there. Second, people, people are cool, especially in live streaming and all that. Wouldn't even I wouldn't even stress about that too much. Dean Nimmin in the house. What's up? Says he threw me out of a moving train. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not just once. I mean, that, that was the first, you know, that, that was the first time the moving train, then it was like a moving bike, then it was a moving car. And then, yeah, he's got this like theme. I don't know. I don't know what the thing is with the, but anyway, Tom Nash what's up, dude. Hope that you are doing fantastic. Says can't imagine my Sunday mornings without this show anymore. Tom Nash, my man, hope that you're doing awesome. Thank you for uh, swinging by dude. Hope you're doing great. Uh, the uh, name of the next channel is Zoe's second chance. Zoe's second chance says, yeah, I've tried those pillows. Uh, so I'm getting some like health suggestions here. So um, the artist Haven says, um, you need to try one of those memory foam pillows. Um, a friend of mine has one and says it's next level to help with back pain. I've tried some of those. Uh, maybe I need to give it a shot again. Um, I've tried some and it just hasn't, uh, you know, it hasn't really helped me. Uh, it hasn't helped me that much. <laughs> so Zoe's second chance, but thank you for the, for the suggestion. I, I appreciate it. Zoe Second Chance says they upload one time per week or more, been on YouTube for less than six months. Um, the goal of the channel is to educate people about special needs dogs and encourage adoption, connect with people, and to help my dog. Um, the question is, this is my second channel, my first vlog channel. I know you're supposed to make thumbnails and title before hitting record. Do these roles apply to vlog channels as well? And if so, how do you do this when your subject matter has four legs and can be spontaneous? So if you are making a vlog, you have... You have, um, if you're making a vlog, you have the option to think about, okay, 
today we're gonna make a vlog, so what can we do that's going to be entertaining? And then from there, you would know what it is that you're gonna do that's gonna be entertaining, and then you can think to yourself, okay, what would the title be? for this particular way? How would I actually package this up? Or, or and I should say, and for this particular idea, what would a thumbnail look like for this? And you can go ahead and make the thumbnail if you have you know, footage or images or things like that, or you can come up with the idea for the thumbnail. And then when you're actually out there in the world and you're doing the things with your dog, you can ensure that as many times you gotta you know, do it in order to get the right picture, you can ensure that you get the right images that you need in order to make the thumbnail that you envisioned. And it's even better if you can get a couple variations of it as well. So just in case the one that you originally thought of doesn't perform the way that you want, you have some others on standby that you can swap it out with if you need to. Super Danielle chat. Cutting Caboose, thank you for the super chat, says, why did the devil have to give up YouTube? He kept getting demonetized. Love it. Love it. I don't know. Are you coming up with these yourself? These are great. It's like a whole YouTube dad joke book. <laughs> oh, love it. It's awesome. So uh, next, next, uh, 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 Thing that we have here next question that we have here on our list and really quick if you are just joining us if you're seeing the big announcement thing and that's why you came in um really quick i just want to let you know for everyone um, else that's heard this already we'll get back into this here in just about 30 seconds but the thing that i am uh the big announcement is that there was a audio leak of a youtube meeting published by the new york times and within this audio leak, um, YouTube mentioned that they are going to be reducing the requirements for entering the partner program on YouTube, which is a huge win. If you're just getting started on YouTube, this means that you'll be able to monetize faster. You'll be able to start making money from your YouTube efforts faster, which is a win. Um, in addition to that, um, another thing that they are doing as part of this particular you know, leak or whatever is they are also going to start showing ads on YouTube Shorts. So if you are a YouTube Shorts creator, or shorts are a part of the scheduled you know, content that you put out, um, then in that particular case in the future, um, near future is what it sounds like, you are going to be able to start having ads show up. So not only are you gonna get into the partner program easier, but you're also going to be able to monetize your YouTube shorts. So that's just wins all the way around for content creators, but especially new content creators that are like, hey, I just wanna you know, start using YouTube to kind of help fill you know fill some of this void that i'm feeling with like inflation and all that stuff um you know this is going to be something that'll like really you know help you out in that um in that regard that nerd chris hope you're doing great welcome to the stream um next question that we have here is from 86th street project 86th street project says they have a help channel goal is to um, help new and aspiring chefs the question is two things i've learned after binging the content from you and several youtube help channel is that seo is not as important for experienced creators and subs are not nearly as important to that they used to be because of how YouTube pushes content in 2022. Is this true? Is there some nuance to this that I'm missing? Okay, there is nuance to this that you're missing. So first, um, um, depending on exactly what it is that you're putting out, you may not want to sleep on YouTube search. YouTube search is extremely powerful. It's extremely consistent in terms of the traffic that you get from YouTube search. You can sustain content for an extremely long time through YouTube search. If you get, as a matter of fact, I have have videos that have ranked mostly most of the traffic has come from YouTube search and just those particular videos on the affiliate side have made like 50 grand so when it comes to YouTube search like it has its place and it's definitely something that you can leverage for consistency it's definitely something that you can leverage for consistent income it's also something that you can leverage just for you know continuing that activity on your channel even if you have to take a you know extended break or something like that now let's talk about the other side of this so, so what I'm telling you right here is don't sleep on YouTube search or don't, you know, don't, don't think that there isn't any value in YouTube search because there is, there's people saying that, you know, like, oh, you know, search doesn't matter. It does. Um, there's tons of traffic still going through YouTube search. However, the majority of traffic on YouTube comes from the recommendation features. So the recommendation features are where YouTube recommends a piece of content to you. So the difference is if you were to put up a video right now, and if it were to get number one in YouTube search for something that is, you know, search for relatively high, maybe not something that's trending in the world that everybody's looking for, but something that, you know, that gets a decent amount of, you know, steady, you know, high amounts of traffic to it. Um, and you rank in that number one spot. Well, over the next 24 hours, it's probably going to be relatively difficult for you to get, you know, a hundred thousand views on that particular video. However, if, because people, you have to have a hundred thousand people more than a hundred thousand people that are searching for that video. And then out of that more than 100,000 people that are searching for that video, a hundred thousand people would have to click on it from YouTube search. If it was only isolated to YouTube search, which is another thing we're going to talk about here in a second. But in addition to that, 
On the recommendation side, the difference is you can publish a video today, you can go to sleep and you can wake up and tomorrow you can have 300,000 views on that particular video if people really respond to it, if it's a broad audience piece of content. So the difference between the speed that you can get views from one compared to the other is, you know, is pretty substantial. However, um, within, within um, YouTube search, the longevity might be there and you might continue to get, you know, more consistent views. So, you know, it really comes down to, you know, the type of content that you make. It comes down to what it is that you're trying to do with each piece of content and so on. But let's level this whole thing up a little bit. So just because you're trying to show up in one doesn't mean that you can't show up in the other. So if you are optimizing your YouTube videos, the very first thing that you always want to think about is the viewer, right? Like, okay, the people that I'm trying to reach, how will they respond to this from the outside when they don't know what the content's about? That's how you get, you know, recommendation traffic. And then from there, what you want to think about if you are trying to get your videos to show up in search, and I got to make a disclaimer here because YouTube is smart enough to where even if you do not have the keyword um, that you're trying to show up for in your title, your videos can still show up in YouTube search and they can still get great positions in YouTube search and you can still get search traffic from it. However, if you do optimize a part of your video, so let's say, for example, you're putting your title together, the main focus is, you know, how can I help the people that I'm trying to connect with here connect with this piece of content for the recommendation features? If you prioritize that and then you say, okay, but within that, is there a way that I can get a keyword in here or a keyword phrase in here that might help me rank in terms of relevance as long as people respond to my content in YouTube search that might help me get into YouTube search easier? right? So that's kind of the idea. Or same thing goes in reverse. If I'm optimizing something for search, right? Because you're going to see tons of videos on like YouTube SEO and stuff. So it's like, if you are optimizing your video for YouTube search, then in that particular case, you got to think, okay, if I'm going after search for this, I also want recommendation traffic. So how can I put my title and thumbnail together in a way to where it's going to be great for YouTube search? And if somebody sees it on their homepage, it's also going to be easily identifiable for them in terms of content that they might be interested in. And then it's also going to be compelling enough at the title level that will, that it will, you know, cause the people that I'm trying to reach to click on it. So, you know, it's, it's a, it's a much bigger picture, but the idea is that you want to, you know, you want to get traffic from everywhere, but the majority of traffic and the fast traffic comes from the recommendation features. And then if you are, you know, if you're making, you know, like educational type content and things like that, then in that particular case, you can get that longevity from YouTube search. And if you're, if you're doing like reviews of products and things like that, YouTube search is definitely something you want to, to have in your mind about, okay, when I'm optimizing this, I need to get that response from the people, but I also, you know, want to help YouTube understand in an easier way. And again, it's smart hard enough to know, but you want to help it along to understand um, that this video is something that, um, that, you know, that, that I'm trying to, that I'm optimizing this around this particular search term or phrase. And another thing, as we keep layering this whole, you know, thing up is when it does come to YouTube search, another part of that is when you are going into the recommendation features, that also doesn't mean that you can't use a keyword because what keywords do is it's not just for YouTube, but it's keywords also help us as viewers. When we're in viewer mode, it helps us identify that content is about a particular thing that we care about also. So just like that imagery does in the thumbnail in terms of, you know, optimizing that thumbnail to help people identify what it is. Um, the same exact thing goes for adding a keyword keyword because that keyword helps people also, you know, realize that that video is about something that they care about. So those are some things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to that. Super Next up on our list, we got the driver sensei says, yo, Nick. So YouTube shorts, thank you for super chat says, yo, uh, so YouTube shorts, Snapchat ad every seven seconds. Should I delete old videos that don't deal with traveling and exploring since most videos were made during the bug and travel was a no, no. Okay, so you're saying um, you are doing Snapchat videos? Oh no, the question is, should I delete old videos that don't deal with traveling and exploring? Um, if you think that they're a good fit, excuse me, if you think they're a good fit for the audience you're trying to reach, um, then in that particular case, leave them. But if you're like, you know what? The people that I'm actually trying to reach are into this and these videos over here are just not related to what it is that I'm actually trying to do with this YouTube channel, then in that case, that's where you wanna consider deleting them. Um, and the reason for that is because, you know, the more cohesive your channel is in terms of like, hey, you know, every single video on this channel is something that if somebody comes in from one video, they can enjoy any other video on the channel. That's ultimately the goal that you, that you wanna have when it comes to your channel. Um, let's see here. Next up on our list here, we're on number 15 already. This is great. Cruising right along. So uh, we've got, uh, let's see here. One step uploads every other day. They do fighting games. The goal is to turn my skills into a passion and into a profitable and fun career. Um, the question is, good morning, my dude. Good morning, my dude. 
says, um, absolutely love Saturday mornings. Hey, what exactly um, are YouTube stories? Like, what's the point? Because short form vertical content, it sounds like um, YouTube shorts. Like, what type of content would you put in stories that you wouldn't just make a short for? Pros, cons, thanks for all you do, my dude. So um, when it comes to YouTube stories, here, we're just gonna make one real quick and I'll show you. So when it comes to YouTube stories, um, the difference with YouTube stories is that, let's see here, add to my story. And this is, um, let's see here, one step. Hey, I wanted to give a shout out here to One Step for asking this question about YouTube stories. I actually answered this on my live stream, so make sure that you check out my live stream. It's gonna be linked on the screen. Actually, no, it's not. Never mind. I'm not gonna publish this. <laughs> So, so yeah, I went down the wrong direction on that one, so I'd have to retake it. But anyway, the idea with YouTube Shorts is they're extre or not shorts, but stories is they're extremely short, right? So with YouTube Shorts, you have the things, the videos that are under you know 60 seconds, but with stories, it's a different thing. So these don't necessarily get promoted at the rate that like a YouTube Short does. So when it comes to stories, you know those will typically pop up. There's a little shelf that can come up in your feed, but when it comes to um, when it comes to stories. Um, the difference is, is they don't get that hard promotion that YouTube shorts do. So for example, if you go onto the YouTube app and you click on the shorts option down there at the bottom, you're just going to see tons of YouTube shorts. They don't have that for stories. So, you know, because of that, you know, it's more of a way in terms of using it, a way that you can, you know, connect with your viewers. You can show them behind the scenes stuff and you don't have to really worry about it necessarily impacting the other content that you have on your YouTube channel. So like with, you know, YouTube shorts, things like that, you got to make sure you're thinking like topically is this relevant for my audience so that if they were to come into this short and then they go over to my long form content that the things that I'm doing between these two pieces of content are similar. You don't have to think about that with, with stories. So with stories, you can be like, oh, hey guys, I'm walking, uh, you know, I'm going shopping today. I'm going to get some, you know, stuff and whatever. And you can kind of use it as like a little vlog if you want to. Um, you can also link to videos inside of YouTube stories. So you can use that if you want to um, as a way to also bring attention to, you know, past videos that you published on your channel, that kind of thing. Um, but you can, you know, use it to answer questions directly from your community, which we have that function now on YouTube shorts as well, but it's more appropriate if you're going to just have a conversation to do it in YouTube stories. And if you're going to take that comment and make actual content from it, then in that case, that's where you would do it in a, um, in a YouTube short. So um, really quick, for those of you that are just joining us, um, I'm not sure how many of you are coming in because of the um, big announcement um, thing that I have in the title there. Um, but if you are coming in from that, I just want to let you know, um, just, you know, cause I don't want you to be like, hey, he said he is, for this was an announcement and like well, he's answering questions like what's going on. So um, that particular announcement is that YouTube, there's been an audio leak from a YouTube meeting. Um, and this was put out by the New York Times. In this particular audio link, they mentioned that they are going to be um, reducing the requirements to the YouTube Partner Program, which is awesome, um, especially if you're you know just getting started. And in addition to that, they're also going to start putting ads in YouTube Shorts. So when it comes to YouTube Shorts, currently the only way that you can get ad revenue from that, or not ad revenue, but revenue from that, is if you're selling something you know as an affiliate, or if you are um, getting money from the Shorts Fund. Now, not now, but when they rolled this out, then you're going to be able to start getting just normal, you know, YouTube ad revenue from YouTube Shorts as well. So it's a pretty big deal, and that limit, that lowering of the requirements into the partner program is also a major, uh, major deal. Uh, let's see here. So next up on our list, we've got built game tough. Built game tough. Hold on really quick here, boom. Built Game Tough says that they do daily content. They've been on YouTube for less than six months. They do gaming content. The goal of the channel is to provide viewer videos for people to watch. Question is, when I change my channel name and channel art, how long does it take for YouTube to update channel name on existing videos? Um, it should happen extremely quickly. Um, so if you're not seeing it, you might wanna like, you know, clear your cache on your computer um, or your phone, um, and then, you know, kind of reload the YouTube app if you're looking on your phone, um, just to see, you know, if that took place, but it should happen relatively quickly. And by relatively quickly, I mean, you know, within minutes of you, of you making that change. If you're enjoying the show, remember to give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend right now. Next up on our list, we got Karen Equestrian. Karen Equestrian says that they have an equestrian channel. The goal of the channel is um, education and entertainment. The question is, I'm from the UK, but my videos seem to be pushed out only to foreign countries and not even horse channels. How do I sort this? I do SEO, tags, etc., all in English, so I don't know what I've done wrong. Thank you. Okay. 
So this is one of those situations to where you're, you're specifically optimizing everything for YouTube search. You might wanna try your hand at recommendation features. And the difference between the two is when you are optimizing for YouTube search, you're being extremely clear in your title about what your video is about. Um, and then you're trying to add some compelling things to that to help differentiate you from the other videos that are showing up there in YouTube search. When it comes to the recommendation features, you have to look at it through the lens of, okay, I'm trying to get horse people in here, people that are interested in horses. So how, through only my thumbnail and my title, express the topic of this video and help them identify that this is about horses and about something that they're interested in. Um, so I would try that route and see, uh, you know, see if that if you have uh, any better luck, so to speak, or any better success getting in front of the right, uh, getting in front of the right people there. Because you know, one thing, um, like in your case, like you're uploading videos from the UK, which doesn't really have a bearing on who it is that's seeing your content. Because, you know, like if somebody in the States is enjoying your content or most of the people in the States are, that are interacting with your content are enjoying it, then that would become your, you know, primary audience. If it's mostly people in the UK, that would become your primary audience. But you will have people watching from all over the world. So it doesn't matter, you know, if, um, if you know, what type of content you're making, there will be people from all over the world that will, that will be interested in that content. So, um, so because of that, you're going to get a foreign audience, but um, but you just want to make sure that if you are trying to reach people in the UK or just a Western audience, then in that case, you want to make sure that you are um, uh, you you just want to make sure that you are um, knowing that you will have the foreign audience in there, but you just need to try to tap more into recommendation features or go after better. If you are targeting YouTube search, go after better um, uh, phrases that will you know get you in front of that better audience as well. Um, let's see here. So, um, thanks for the message, Doug looking, uh, looking now. So let's see here. We got this. Okay. So really quick, super um, chat. bit of one of a wonder says, um, thank you for the super chat, by the way. So just saying, thanks. I'm hitting 2000 subs today. Next. Oop. Congratulations to you. High five and fist bump on your first 2000 subscribers. Nice work. Um, says in my travel channel, um, let's see here, hitting 2,000 subs today with my travel channel and been watching you from the start. Thanks for me and all the wonders. Nice. That's awesome. Congratulations to you for that 2,000. Looking forward to you coming in being like, hey, got 50,000, got 10,000. We'll start there. Got 10,000, got, got 25,000, got 50,000, right? So the next one that we have here is from uh, Note Soldier. Super says, hey, Nick, um, is it advisable to release one master tutorial and simultaneously release it as a playlist of smaller videos on YouTube? Um, you can do that, but um, one thing to think about is if you are putting out the smaller ones, make sure that you are leading into the bigger one. So for example, let them know. Um, and like do a new intro for those shorter ones. So don't just take that one piece of content, cut it up into small ones and then publish them as is. Put an intro on it and just frame it around that one thing that you're gonna be showing in that particular video. And then within that particular video, let them know, um, you know, I have a full tutorial about this. I'll put a link to it down in the description. You know, I'll, I'll link to it in the end of this video as well. So you can use this as a sample to see, you know, how you enjoy this content and you'll be able to watch that next. Um, um, I would take that approach in order to use the smaller content to bring people in, so to speak. And that the longer content is going to bring people in too, but then you're just going to use that the multiple smaller videos as a way to essentially spread awareness about the longer video while also making it so they stand alone as their own piece of content as well. Um, so your trainer, James MTG says, if Nick made a YouTube channel where he filmed 24 seven Truman show style, I would subscribe and watch stay comfy. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. You know, I got CCTV. I could just, you know, give you access if you want, <laughs> give you access to it. You know, you can, uh, you know, we can, you know, you can just watch all the crazy stuff that I do in here. Like when the stream's over, you know, like my, uh, my little dances that I do, you know, I have like a whole dance routine that I do when the stream's over. So you get some insight on that. I don't really have a dance routine. I'm just joking, but, uh, but yeah, you'd have that. Hey, uh, really quick, uh, Brian G. Johnson in the house. What is up, my dude? Hope that you're doing fantastic. Brian says, uh, thanks for sharing the update on comments to shorts. Just use that and we'll be doing it more. B to the G, dig. That's what I'm talking about, my man. Hope that you are doing fantastic. The Epps Effect Super says, hey, uh, says, hey, morning. I'm a small gaming channel. I wanted to know, can the community post help with growth? It can. Um, the way that the community post can help with growth is that it can help bring people back into your YouTube channel. So there's a few different things that are that are that that can help you there. So the very first is it's a way that you can interact. 
So, you know, you can ask questions to your audience to help you better understand them so that you can make content in a way that is more appealing to them or so you can make very specific pieces of content that, that you find out that they actually want from you. Um, so you can use it for that. And by doing that, that will help you, you know, make sure that you're making the right content for them. Um, in addition to that, um, you can also use it to drive viewers into very specific videos or playlists. So the idea here is, let's say that you have a video from three months ago that you're like, you know what, people really loved this video and you know it's not getting tons of activity on it now, but people really loved it. So because of that, I'm going to share it now in my community feed so that the people that haven't seen that video yet get another opportunity to see that video. And then when you do that, then what you're going to see is you're going to see that your audience is going to click on that video. Some people will, um, they'll click on that video and they'll go and watch that video. But one thing that you're gonna see that's gonna be confusing is if you look at the community post on video posts, you're gonna see those have the lowest engagement. However, if you go and you look at the response on the video side, as long as you know you have activity happening in your post and people are responding to your post, and you can get them to click, then you'll see it actually, you'll see that, that um, engagement transfer over to the video itself instead of it necessarily happening on the community tab. So, um, so when you are tracking like, hey, I make a poll, these are wildly successful. I ask a question, these are wildly successful. I'm showing images, those are okay successful. Or I'm, you know, these are, you're doing great. People love when I show them the behind the scenes stuff. Like you're gonna see all the results from those and YouTube gives us analytics on that. Um, but then when you're sharing videos, that's where you wanna look at the actual video itself to see the impact that those shares are making. But you can use those as a way to keep people engaged in your content, to keep yourself relevant in terms of just being at top of mind of people seeing, you know, something from you all the time. And in addition to that, you can use it to drive um, viewership into um, older content and just pull people back into the channel in general. Great question though. Um, let's see here. So next up on our list, we've got the here. That one was, okay, we did Karen. Okay, now we're number 18. We've got uh, Rebecca Massey, Rebecca Massey says that they do beauty, fashion, and lifestyle content. The goal of the channel is to make money. And the question is, when using pictures from a brand's website or another website on your YouTube channels, there are copyright issues with that as well. How do you use them properly? So what you wanna do if you have brands that you are promoting, since you're trying to you know, make money from your channel, if you have brands that you're promoting their stuff, then you want to reach out to them and ask them for a media kit. Um, if they don't have one, then you wanna ask them for images um, with written permission that you can use those images in your videos. And by doing that, you're creating a layer of protection, so to speak, that you won't have any problems with. Um, so that's the route that you wanna take. And the funny thing is, you can find you know these uh, you know media kits, you can find them for, um, or media kits, press kits, you can find them for games gaming um, content, you can find them for car content, you can find them for cooking content, you can find them for fitness content, like you can find them for all kinds of different content, but that's the way that you just do it in a 100% safe manner. Because technically, just so you know this, when you're using images, like let's say you go to Amazon, you're like, hey, I'm just gonna take this image off of Amazon because it's a good picture of the product. Um, in some cases, the people selling those things aren't necessarily the manufacturer and they've taken their own pictures. And because of that, you can get yourself in hot water there by using their stuff. Let's see here. Next up on our list, we've got Elite Barbecue Smokers says, they do grilling and cooking content. The goal of the channel is sharing recipes and techniques and to monetize. Question, should I unlist or delete old videos that are not doing well and re-edit them or, and upload them or just re-edit and republish? So if they're not doing well, I, would necess I wouldn't necessarily take them down. Um, and the reason for that is because sometimes on YouTube, like you'll have videos to where when you publish them, it's like, oh, the people aren't responding to this. And then you check back in 90 days later or, you know, 60 days later. And it's like, oh, wow, this video is, you know, this video is like really picking up steam. So, um, so because of that, I've let the videos live on for a little bit. And instead of assuming that they're not doing well, um, just as the content, I would actually mess with the thumbnail and title a little bit and experiment there before you worried about, you know, taking them down, re-editing them and all of that. Uh, next up on our list, we've got run number 20. Woo, woo. Yeah, I think we're definitely going to get through uh, probably 50 plus today. So the next one is uh, Indie Vlogger. Indie Vlogger, they do a business channel. The goal of the channel is to teach people to become independent vloggers via their own website. And the question is, on the channel dashboard page, it shows an amount of watch time hour, but in the monetization section, it shows less watch time hours. The reason for this is because the channel dashboard is showing you, first off, if you go for like lifetime, that's where you're gonna see all the watch time that you've gained. But the 
One for monetization, the only thing that counts towards monetization is public videos. So if you have any videos on your channel that have gained watch time that you've unpublished or that you've deleted or that you've made um, uh, um, unlisted, then that's going to that's going to cause you to lose that public watch hours, which then is going to negatively impact you when you're trying to raise that meter, so to speak, on getting into the partner program. But rest assured, they're lowering their requirements on that soon. So um, according to that leak, so uh, so. So you're not going to have to worry about that much anymore. So uh, the next channel is from Crazy Kid 949 They do content one time per week or more. It's original stand-up comedy routines. The goal of the channel is to entertain people with my comedy, styling, and bring joy and happiness to the world. And the question is, I have a stand-up comedy channel, but recently I was asked to do a series of how I do my videos. Apparently they like them that much. Is that much of a bad thing to slip out of the niche to do a one-time step outside and go back to the original niche? So you can do this sort of thing, but one thing to just keep in mind is let's say, right, let's just go into theoreticals here. If you're trying to build a channel around comedy routines and you're trying to get your exposure as a comedian, and you publish a video on how you make your comedy videos, if they're skits, skits or whatever, I'm not sure exactly what you're doing, but if you if you make a video showing how you make your videos, let's say, theoretically, that that particular video ends up going to the moon. Let's say you get millions and millions of views on that video because you put the title and thumbnail together in a way that people clicked on it at an extremely high rate. They watched the video for a long period of time, sharing it with their friends because they thought it was super interesting or maybe even funny because you worked some comedy into it. Um, they're just, it's just a super engaging piece of content and it blows up. That puts you in a really weird position and as it relates to your YouTube channel because you're gaining an audience at that point of people that are interested in like how you're putting your videos together and not necessarily your comedy. So one thing to think about is if you are going to do that, you wanna think about the audience that you're trying to reach and you wanna make sure that you're making it in a way to where if it did do extremely well, it would at least do well for the right audience or for the right reasons so that your other content would resonate with them. So let me give you an example. If you're going to do a video of how you make your videos, you should try to do it in the way that you make your videos um, and try to make it funny because you're trying to do your whole thing around comedy. So then in that way, if that video happens to do extremely well, then you're at least making it still funny. So it's, hey, this is how I make my videos, but I'm still doing the comedy bit as I'm showing you how I make my videos. So then that way you're growing that audience of people that are interested in watching, you know, comedy type of content. And then that still gives you that opportunity to serve them in the correct way. Um, another example of this is with the new segment that I do. Um, you know, with that, you know, the, even though it's the news, it's not YouTube tips. Um, it's not showing you, you know, like, like live streaming tech. It's not showing you video editing software, nothing like that. It's YouTube news. So it's a completely different format from everything else, but it's targeted towards the same people, right? So because of that, if I have one of those that just does awesome, then in that case, it's fine because it's getting me in front of the right people, which is YouTube content creators. Um, if, if I have another video on my channel that I make, you know, about YouTube and it does awesome, then that news content is still relevant to the people that, uh, that that respond well to that video. Um, if somebody you know responds well to one of the tool videos that I put out, that news content is still going to be relevant to them because it's all targeted towards the same audience. So when you're thinking about your niche on YouTube, you don't necessarily want to think about it from the from the lens of like, hey, this is a massive limitation. I can only put out this one type of content. What you want to think about is you want to think about, okay, who is it that I'm actually trying to reach with this? And within you know the way or within the audience that I'm trying to reach. What all kinds of different stuff could I put together that would really, you know, serve that audience? Um, that's the way you want to think about a niche. It's not necessarily a limitation. It's just thinking about the audience first. That's it. So, um, so if you want to make that video about how to, you know, how you make your videos, do it. I would just make it in a in a funny way so that when you are, um, so that when you are, if that video does exceptionally well, you know, it's still in front of the, you know, still in front of the the people that will respond to your other stuff. Renee Ritchie in the house. What's up, dude? Hope you're doing awesome. Says, when you delete a video, it gets removed from everyone's watch history. Okay, this is a technical detail. Um, Renee actually works at YouTube. So he says, when um, when you delete a video, it gets removed. I don't know why that hides that on there. Hold on, let me kind of click off of that maybe. There we go. Um, when you delete a video, it gets removed from everyone's watch history and they're less likely to get recommended other videos. If you don't want to force an audience change, leave it or unlist it. Fantastic. Great, uh, great information there. Thanks for the uh, for the deeper insights. Those are always appreciated. So I'm um, gonna see here. So next up on our list here, um, that was a great question uh, though, by the way. Next up, we've got Haunted Jess. 
Um, the type of channel is a gaming channel. The goal is to entertain people and make a living out of it. The question is, shorts ruin the aesthetic of a channel, so are they worth it? Boy, do I have some news for you. So you should go and watch the new segment that I put out yesterday. And I'll just go ahead and you know give you a spoiler. One of the things that we talked about there um, is that YouTube in the in fall, I think is when they're, they said they're rolling it out. Um, they are making adjustments to our channel pages. And as part of those adjustments, they are containing certain types of content. So if you live stream, you'll have a live stream tab where people can click on that and they can see your live streams. They'll have a videos tab where they click on that, they see all your videos. They'll have a shorts tab where they click on that, they see all of your YouTube shorts. If somebody's watching a YouTube shorts, they a short, they click on your channel name, it's gonna take them to your shorts page, which I mean, you already have a shorts page, um, but the whole thing is going to be like a YouTube channel and you're gonna have the option to, you know, like sell your memberships from it and get the subscriber from it and all that stuff, just like you do a main channel right now. Um, so if you don't, according to them, if you don't have a certain type of content. So for those of you that don't do YouTube shorts, or you don't do live streams, then those will automatically not even show up. So then it'll just focus viewers on the content that you make. In addition to that, another really awesome thing that we're going to put out, and I just want to, I just want to say this one really quick because it's awesome. So you know how TikTok has a for you page? Well, with YouTube, one thing that they are um, going to be adding in the future to our channel pages is the option to add a for you section on our channel page. So that means if somebody hits our channel page, that it's not just the videos that we put in there in that particular playlist. That particular playlist is going to be dynamic, dy dynamic and it's going to change based on the, what YouTube thinks is the best content from our channel for that particular viewer, which is pretty awesome. So just all the way around, like it's, you know, like the, like the, the updates that they're making are like Andrew can says right here, smart changes. Yeah, the great changes. And it's something that we've all, you know, been wanting for a really long time. So I'm really excited um, that they are, you know, making these, uh, making these changes. So uh, let's see here. So next up on our list, We've got um, Oliver and Lucas. Uh, hey, one more thing I wanna talk about here with um, with YouTube Shorts on that last question. So, um, you know, when you're talking about how it does ruin the aesthetic of a channel, um, so are they worth it? So one question that I want you to answer um, as well is if it comes, if it came down to having a channel that looked nice and clean and you missing out on a huge opportunity of, you know, getting a lot more views on your YouTube channel from YouTube Shorts, would you prioritize what your YouTube channel looks like compared to, you know, all of those views that you could get and all the impact that you could create through those views? Or in that same exact scenario, um, would you be more likely to be like, hey, yeah, I would actually, you know, want to put out the shorts, even though it's going to make my channel a little messy right now. I want to put out that short so that one, I can make sure that I'm, you know, just seeing maybe you're an awesome shorts creator, right? Like maybe your shorts will do way better than your video content. Maybe you're just awesome at that. But, um, but when it comes to, you know, that particular feature, um, I wouldn't just not do it for the sake of, you know, how it looks on the channel page. Um, I would just think of it from the perspective of, okay, this is a feature. And now that you know that they're going to be cleaning up the channel pages and organizing things in a way that makes everything make a little bit more sense, um, then that's kind of like a full, you know, green light pedal to the floor, you know, on, on doing YouTube shorts pedal to the floor. What is this like smoking the bandit? Like, what am I, what am I talking about here? <laughs> we drive, are we driving semi trucks, right? We got a convoy. Is that what's going on? Okay. So um, next channel, we got Oliver and Lucas. They do educational videos for kids. Um, they upload one time per week or more. They do educational videos for kids. Um, the goal of the channel is to encourage kids to want to learn and have an appetite for knowledge. The question is, should a kid's show create shorts? Um, I don't think many kids watch shorts as they would be on YouTube kids. Um, that's a good question. I actually don't do much. Um, and I never, I should say, I've never done, you know, anything necessary. I mean, one channel did kids stuff and then they transitioned out of kids stuff. Um, but outside of them, like I, I don't really have um, like real experience with kids content. So in that particular case, I'm probably not the best person to ask on that one. But one thing I can say is you might have answered that question by just saying like, if I'm trying to reach kids, I need to make sure I'm making content that shows up in the kids app because you know, that's where you're gonna make the biggest impact there. Trucker Curtis says, I drive semi trucks. <laughs> Breaker one nine for radio check. It's great. Okay, so um, let's see here. So we got um, AJ uh, Nuj, uh, Ju, I, I don't know how to say your last name. Uh, Nguyen, 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 maybe is how you say that. Um, I apologize if I'm messing that up. Says they do daily content. Um, it is a gaming channel. The goal of the channel is entertainment. 
And the question is, I've been running a gaming channel for six years. My question is, my audience usually doesn't like when I switch to a different game, but the problem is I have no gaming content that's going to last forever. So how to get my viewers to be more accepting of the new game that I upload on the channel. So here's the thing, when it comes to putting out content, um, you can't force people to do anything. So, you know, you can persuade people to take certain actions and things like that. However, you can't like force people to like your content or to be interested in something that they're not interested in. So, I mean, of course, if you had the opportunity to sit down and talk to them and say like, hey, you know, I made these videos and, you know, they're really cool. And I put, you know, a lot of work into these and, you know, I'm doing these a little bit different. So you might find them more entertaining. If you had that opportunity, then you might be able to do that. But we don't have that opportunity. What we do have is we have, yeah, absolutely. Without question, D, um, I will send you the link right now. So my brother D is going to come on here. It's been a while since uh, since we've streamed together. So I'm going to send him a link right now. So I'll send this to you, um, not on Facebook Messenger, but I will send this to you in um, in Gmail. So give me one second, D. But um, but basically, when it comes to um, when it comes to your viewers accepting it, um, don't think of it through that lens. Like what you want to think of it like is you want to think, okay. If I want to play these other games, then in that particular case, I need to one, make the decision. Flash in your pan, what's up, man? Hope that you're doing fantastic. Nice to see you in the stream today. Um, you want to think about, okay, if I am going to be pivoting into another game or I just want to occasionally put play these other games, then you're gonna you have a choice to make in terms of the approach that you want to take. So the first approach is that you can um, use your community post if you have the subscriber you know limit for it to start asking questions of your audience to figure out other games that they're interested in and other games that they play so that the games that you play are more relevant to your current audience um, same exact thing goes um, you can hop on like reddit for this as well to where you can go into a reddit community around the type of game that you play and you can ask them hey, you know, um, I really love this game, but I also, you know, like some other games. Here are some that I like. What are some that you guys like to play in addition to this game? From there, you're going to start getting, you know, a lot of feedback on other games that people play that also play that game that, that you're growing your channel off of. And then by doing that, what you're doing is you're gaining information based on like, okay, what can I make here that's going to have a similar interest with this same audience if you're trying to nurture that particular audience? But that's another decision you gotta make, which is, okay, do I want to nurture this particular audience or do I wanna make a whole other pillar of content on my channel based around this other game? Um, and then that gives you two different audiences. And if you do that, then what's going to happen? You'll have some crossover in terms of people that you know enjoy watching you know how you do things over here and they'll just watch it just because they like watching you do your thing. And then you're also going to have people that are just gonna be strict and that only care about you know this particular type of content that you put out and then on this side you're going to have that option to you know have that other pillar that you're growing that will grow that particular audience slowly of people that or i'm not going to say slowly but will grow that particular audience of people that are interested in that particular game so then you're going to be put in that position which is fine to where you have to start thinking of like your upload cadence and when am i doing what and you know based on how my channel is performing right now what typically does better and you know all those things so you can make sure that you're making the right decision when you are you know kind of staggering content um, or swapping um, content around um, that you're publishing to serve the different audiences that you're that you're growing. But keep in mind as well, I haven't sent it yet. DM, I actually just opened Gmail. I'm sending it right now. Um, but the um, let's see here. Boom. Okay, just sent. So the, um, let's see here. Yeah. So for that one, what you just want to do is you just want to keep that in mind. Um, right. So I just, you know, try to build that bridge between, you know, the different types of content. Um, but also, you know, just think it's okay, you know, to put out, you know, other content, but you do want to be mindful that if you just have a bunch of different stuff that you're putting out on your channel, one thing that can happen is that, um, you know, if, if you're just doing a bunch of random things, it's possible that the hardcore people just aren't gonna respond as much, but you can grow an audience of people that will come in and watch every game that you play. Um, you know, if it's, if they, you know, if they really get into how you entertain them, so to speak. So, you know, if you are going to be doing that type of thing, I would definitely make sure that you're working on the skill of, you know, just being super entertaining and all of those things that go with, you know, growing that personality brand on YouTube um, for the sake of, you know, getting people to, be more interested in all the different things that you're doing. So really quick, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, um, this, for those of you that are not familiar with him, I know you see him in the chat, um, but this is my brother D that is coming on before he comes on. Señoras y señores, mi hermana de la misma madre que está en estos momentos atrapado en México, Dini Min. <laughs> 
I'm not Brother Mexico D. anymore. What's up, dude? I'm not Mexico anymore. Give me one second. I have to adjust the rest of my audio here as well. Um, so you can go ahead. I think that they can go. They, I think they can already okay. hear you. So I'm just making some minor adjustments here, and then um, and then we. Right on, right on, right on. Go. Yeah, we haven't streamed together in quite some time. So I'm looking forward to. Go ahead and say something real quick, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, so yeah. people in the chat okay, who are new nothing. to Nick's okay, channel, so, Nick and I used to have an entire live streaming to studio sorted. together. And it's, okay, sitting, and it's right sitting right over here in the corner. Got it. Okay. Got it. And I hear an echo. All I hear right. an echo. I hear an, I hear an, an echo. Boom. All right. All right, D. So you wanted to talk about uh, YouTube shorts. What do you got? Hey, really quick before you uh, do the short, do you mind if I answer this question here real quick? Yeah, let me turn, yeah, off, let me the, turn off the... Oh, I got bad echo. I got bad echo. Okay. Yep. My mix minus is on. I'll hit that um, as well. I got my little process I have to go through when... Uh, yep. When folks come on. So really quick, Black Trunks Podcast. Super Thank you for the Super Chat. So thanks for the help. Um, uh, thanks for the help you and Daryl Lee's provided me. I'm currently reading the YouTube formula and taking the course. I'm finally monetized. <laughs> High five and fist bump to you. Nice work on uh, nice work on getting monetized. Love it. How, Absolutely love how's it. How's the echo? On echo's my good. end, you're, you're perfectly echo's fine. Echo's good. Um, All for right. everyone yeah. else. Echo's good. Yeah, echoes yeah, good so on my side. Um, let's see what let's see what everybody else has to say. So for everybody else, what's the uh, what's the echo good. like on your side? Good we're now. Good. No echo. Woo! We did it. We did it, D. No echo. <laughs> yep. Here we go. So for those of you who don't know, Nick and I used to stream together every Sunday. I used to be a co-host on this show up until yep. I was stranded in Mexico for two years, and now yep, uh, the did. whole world has changed. And so. Yeah, well. and and we're we're actually talking about um, occasionally doing streams together um, again as well, um, like in person uh, streams together again as well. Mm -hmm. Currently, we live about thirty minutes apart, so it's, it's right, you right, know, right. logistically it's a little more difficult because we stream late where we are. Um, but we are, you know, we're definitely having that conversation and trying to figure out a way to uh, a way to do it. Yeah. So, D man, so, you want you want to talk about um, shorts, man? What, what what do we got here? So, really quick. So for anybody that is coming in, um, that is coming in because of the, uh, the huge announcement, the big announcement that I have in the title, um, really quick as kind of like a lead into what it is that we're gonna be talking about. YouTube has just, uh, they didn't put it out, but the New York Times got their hands on a internal YouTube meeting where they were saying that they are going to be uh, monetizing YouTube shorts through ads. And in addition to that, they are going to lower the requirements. This is a really big one for a lot of you. They're going to lower the requirements to get into the YouTube partner program. You can start making money on ads. So, you know, that shorts ads is gonna be a win, but especially if they're making it easier to get into the partner program. So it's a fantastic, uh, fantastic thing that they're doing there. D. Yeah, this is huge Thoughts. news. The reason I wanted to come in because I was typing a lot. I've seen several people in this chat and I see it in lots of chats anytime somebody's talking about YouTube shorts. I saw it in Doug Houston's chat when we were live earlier today. A lot of people, and self-included, I had a really hard time coming to terms with short form content, right? I really had a, a, a terrible time. Back in the day, vertical video was terrible. In fact, one of my earlier videos, I'm like, and this is before shorts and before the, the, the whole phenomenon took over. Back then I was like, don't shoot your videos vertically. And I still stand by that if you're trying to shoot something cinematic um, for now because of how things get displayed on desktops and on TV screens. Here's something to pay attention though. Everything has changed. It doesn't matter. And this is a point that I want everybody to understand. It doesn't matter if you like shorts or not as the creator because your audience is going to like them, right? So sitting, so thinking, I don't like shorts so I'm not going to make them. All that means is your audience is gonna be consuming those shorts from somebody else. The bigger picture here is look at all the attention that YouTube is putting on shorts. They're changing everything and building their entire platform now around shorts. They're not doing away with long form content, but they are completely dismantling and rebuilding YouTube and how it works based on YouTube shorts because they have to compete with TikTok. They have to compete and reels. with Facebook reels. reels. Also. They have to compete yeah. with Instagram reels. The competition is on for vertical format. Most people are consuming their videos now either on a phone or on a TV at home. Like those are the two most uh, rising demographics in terms of how people are watching content. Short form content, uh, content makes sense on a phone. It looks terrible on a desktop, it looks terrible on a TV, but it makes total sense on a phone where a staggering, I, I believe it's still 70% of viewers are coming from mobile device, I, I believe. Is that correct? I know it was two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's a majority yes. of, yeah, it's a majority of the traffic on YouTube. 
Um, the, I know that I know that TV viewership. I actually put this stat increasing. out in one of my news right. episodes. I think it was like three or four news episodes ago, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, it's it's a lot of uh, of watch time that's coming from mobile devices. TV exactly. is starting to, to eat into it though. Exactly. But still, whatever, 60%, 70% is coming yeah. from a mobile device. So shorts make sense on a mobile device. And I want you to think about this. The reason YouTube is doing this is they're battling for our attention, for creators, and they're trying to serve the viewer. They want to give the viewer what the viewer wants. And if the viewers are consuming shorts and they've noticed that they are, that's why they're putting now uncropped shorts in our feed on YouTube is to make the viewer have a better experience. And I want you to think about this. So I don't know if any of you in the chat right now are in China or if you spent a lot of time in China, uh, but I've seen how TikTok goes under a different name in China. I believe it's called Douyin or something like that. Um, the way TikTok- That's a refrigerator here in Thailand. <laughs> it is, Douyin and Douyin, du so something like that. Yeah. Uh, the way they've operated over there, and if you wanna get a sneak peek of what's coming here eventually, and this is why the battle is on, and this is why I'm trying to urge people, get on shorts and get on TikTok, get on, get on any platform where you can upload short form content. What TikTok has done in China has completely, they've completely taken over the market. Imagine for those of you who watch CNN, imagine, or, or Fox News or whatever news network you watch, imagine opening up CNN and next to the story there are a bunch of videos from YouTube that are relevant to the story. That's what TikTok has done in China. They've completely monopolized, monopolized the the media networks, the the TV, sh like everything that has to do with media. You open it up, and a lot of them are now integrated with TikTok. I have no doubt that to some degree that's going to come to the to the Western world and the rest of the world eventually. If it's not TikTok, it'll be another platform. But all of these networks are fighting for us now. They're all trying to raise how much they pay us to actually uh, post content there. So do just don't. Don't sleep on shorts. Don't sleep on TikTok. There's so much opportunity here. Even if you don't like them, your audience does not. And I know that was a mouthful, but I just want to urge everyone. Well, this is a another side of that too is just the evolution. Huge. You know, it's like the evolution. evolution. Yes. Like, like it's really easy, especially if you've been doing this stuff for a while. It's really easy for your brain to be like, okay, this is the way that it should yeah. be, right? Yeah. To where it's like, this is how yeah. it should be. There's yeah. that argument, but then there's the way that it is. <laughs> right? The way that it is. And then right. there's the way that it's going. So, you know, because of that, you have to make that choice on, you know, like, am I going to, you know, participate in the way that it's going um, or not? Now, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, put everything on one channel. It doesn't right. mean you have to do it all right. the time. It doesn't mean right. that, you know, that you have to stop doing whatever it is that you're currently doing. It just means that, you know, this is the way that things are heading. And if you really want to maximize your opportunity as a content creator, then this is something that you just want to, you know, this is something that you want to consider. Yeah, absolutely. And really, let's be honest, and, it's easy content. Like, uh, you know, like it's it's relatively easy, even putting together like a good edited short, like it's relatively, you know, easy content to uh, to make as well, just because it is, it's short in nature. So, you know, if you have a five minute video, just think you're cutting your time down into a fifth, right? With yeah. the, um, you know, with the yeah. amount of time that you need to make for the, for the, you know, for the shorts currently. Once that, once they start doing long shorts, then it's gonna be a little bit different, um, which those will be, you know, longs, I guess. I don't know how that's gonna work in the short self, but just like TikTok, I'm sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> right, so Tara with Ruby brings up a good point. She says, shorts will clutter up the subscription box and that bothers me. It will for now. It will for now. Think long-term. Imagine what's gonna happen. It's just like your long form video. The more content you have in your library, the better chance of you having evergreen content, right? Continually getting views over and over and over. Eventually the same thing's gonna happen with shorts because shorts traffic doesn't only come from the shorts feed. That's where fast traffic is, but you can also get browse traffic. You can get search traffic. I've got a, I've got a short traffic. right now on my YouTube channel. It's got 100,000 views, almost 100,000 views. Almost all of that is from YouTube search. I've got a, just a tiny little bit of traffic coming from the short from shelf. Short Everything feed. else yeah. is YouTube search on that particular video. And it's got almost 100,000 yeah. views on it. Yeah, I made a tweet today. I was actually searching for something regarding YouTube shorts. And my short that I just made yesterday was the first result when I was looking for something about YouTube shorts. I was, oh, wow, they're surfacing now for Google results. So look, they're, they're putting so much weight behind this. And again, it, it, they're going to clean it up. They're this whole shorts thing is a work in progress. They are going to make it so it's it's best for the viewer. It might take them a little bit of time, but they're going to figure out all these problems. And again, it's, you know, what well, shouldn't be this way, or it's ruining people's attention spans, or it's just a bunch of stupid kids dancing. It doesn't matter because people are consuming them. You don't have to consume them. And that's where the disconnect is. If you don't like shorts, don't consume them. If you don't like TikTok, don't consume TikTok. 
but if you want to grow a community, you want to have uh, opportunities in terms of like making money and growing your brand, et cetera, upload to all these platforms. Don't, don't sleep on shorts. That, that's my piece. Yeah. And, and I think, I think another, another part of this D is that, you know, when it comes to shorts, especially if you're not using like on platform music, when it comes to shorts, like the, uh, another awesome thing is it like, you can't make it any easier to repurpose that stuff. So, you right. know, like if you make a short, you're like, it. Hey, I'm going to use this on my YouTube channel, then you might as well take an extra 10 minutes and upload it to TikTok and go ahead and upload it to Instagram reels, because you might find that you end up growing a huge following on TikTok or on Instagram reels that you can direct back towards your YouTube channel so that you can, you know, kind of fully, you know, capitalize on all of the stuff, so to speak. I've seen it work both ways. I've seen people who dominate on TikTok not be able to grow on YouTube. And I've seen people who were not able to grow on YouTube just absolutely destroy over on TikTok and do so in, in, in a really fast time. And then they're able to drive traffic back to YouTube from their very large following on TikTok. So I don't think that there's only one way to do this. And the best advice, because I, I see people talking about, um, I don't get any views. Here's the thing. When it comes to shorts, you still have to treat them like a quality video. They still have to be relevant or entertaining or provide some sort of value and focus everything on the first one to two seconds because everything is swiping now. I, I, those of you who are single, maybe you're on Tinder, you know what I'm talking about. You swipe left, swipe right. It's just a swipe. So if you don't grab them in that first second, they just swipe on to the next one, swipe, swipe, swipe. So it's not like, well, you got 10 seconds to get their attention. You've got a second. You got a second flat to get their attention with a short. So get yeah, that we've got hook feedback at the coming in right now. Feedback Let's coming go. in right now. Um, Jerry Let's Papandria go. says, I have I have videos created for YouTube shorts that have gotten over 150,000 views on Facebook Reels. We right. have the Elliott family of 17. We get millions of views um, from TikTok repurposed shorts. So, right. you know, definitely, you know, definitely right. opportunity there. Yeah, what I would do for a strategy for short form content, I wouldn't upload anything with a watermark on it. So if you upload it to TikTok first and they give you the watermark, don't use that. Record yeah. everything natively then upload that video into YouTube Shorts, put it up into TikTok, put it into Facebook Reels, put it into Instagram Reels, put it on any short form platform you can natively and just let it do do its thing there. That's what I would do. Because you yep. never know where you're gonna pop off. Could be Facebook and Facebook is paying a lot right now. If you can get monetized on Facebook, they're paying a lot of money for their Reels. You have some people in your community that are that are like banking over on banking. Facebook. Um, if I remember, ten right, thousand right? a like, month, fifteen thousand dollars a month. Yeah, yeah just nice. on Facebook Reels by themselves, ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month with Facebook Reels. Yeah, yeah it's incredible. Absolutely, Professor incredible. Nez. In terms Professor of, Nez like, is making think like, about that just from a repurposing perspective. Like I'm making this for yeah. YouTube, but hey, let me just go ahead and put it here, and then you know you end up in that yeah. situation where you're uh, you know where you're just getting that extra income just for the sake that you took that extra ten minutes to put it over there. It's pretty yeah. incredible, actually. Yeah, a lot of us in the, the the stream right now, we know Professor Nez. He's made plenty of posts on Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter showing his stats. He's been making anywhere from five to ten grand a month posting on Inst or on Facebook Reels. So nice. I see so many people just sleeping on everything. I'm just like, get on it, get on it. Like I can't make any money with shorts. Well then put it, put it somewhere else. And now yeah. you're going to be able to make money with shorts. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty, it's, it's a pretty coming. awesome update. Um, yeah, man, yeah Roberto is, wants to come I'm on and excited. talk about this too. Yeah. yeah like, man, I'm, um, it's I'm a pretty so awesome excited update. about this. Yeah, me too. Like, um, it's a pretty awesome update. And I think that, um, you know, that, the fact that they're going to be putting ads on those soon and lowering the requirements for the partner program, like those two things combined um, are also yeah. huge in terms of like back in the day, um, back when, back when I first started making videos, you know, back when we had dinosaurs roaming the right. earth, um, right. back when, when that was going on, the, uh, uh, you could literally monetize your account before you even uploaded a video. So all you had to do is create a YouTube account and then you took your AdSense code and you put it into your YouTube channel and then bam, you were monetized. Like you didn't have to go through any crazy process or anything like that or any requirements. You just had to make sure that you stayed compliant once you started uploading the videos. Um, but you know, now that they're reducing that requirement, that means that people are gonna be able to come onto YouTube and monetize faster and start, you know, for those of you that, you know, that as part of your question and goals for your channel is to, you know, start making money or to have this as a side income or a full-time income, that means that that path for you and that reality for you is going yep. to be happening at a, at a much more rapid, uh, a much more rapid rate. Yeah. And I'm not saying ignore long form content. If you're a long form creator, keep doing your thing, but also incorporate short form content, short form content 
and continue to do it on other platforms as well. But most importantly, just read the room. Look at what's happening right now. Look at the changes that YouTube is doing almost by the day now. It seems almost every day or every other day we're getting news or leaks from YouTube talking about things that they're doing to improve the viewer experience for YouTube Shorts. Read the room. Big changes are coming. So you're, you're either going to ride the wave or you're going to be left behind thinking, man, I should have got on YouTube Shorts when I had the chance. Going to ride the wave or get crushed by it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know if it'll be that extreme. Like, yeah, I, I still I like think that, you know, there'll be a place for people that, you know, that are, you know, focused on long form and there'll be a place for, you know, some of the channels that just focus on live and for some of the channels that just focus on shorts. I think, I think you know, everything will have its place based on what the viewers want. And I think that's why they're, you know, making the updates to the channel pages and things like well, that so that they can cater the entire platform to like, hey, if you want to watch this, if you enjoy this and you click on the channel name, then you're going to get more content like that. So if it's live streams, then you get more live stream content. If it's shorts, you get more shorts content, videos, you get more videos content. It's awesome. Absolutely. Crushed awesome. by the waves a little extreme, but just think about for those of yeah. you who those of you who jumped on shorts originally, you know how easy it was to get views back then. And then over time, it's just been getting a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder. It's going to continue to be harder, especially once it's fully monetized. It's going to be just as difficult as long form content is. So my, my whole thing is just get in now. Get in now and perfect the craft and get really good at it now while you can. Yeah. Yeah, and really quick here, um, Roberto said he wants to join the conversation. I sent him a, uh, a message here. So, um, so hopefully he sees that. I mean, he might be getting his tech ready. Um, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Like, um, um, I think just the fact that they're making all these changes and they're doing it rapidly. Like, uh, you know, there was a period of time, we'll just go ahead and say it, like two years where like not a lot was really changing and it kind of left everybody with this thing. Like, I don't know if I should do that or not because it kind of pollutes everything. And some of the, you know, comments that have been, you know, um, mentioned here earlier, like in some of the questions about it kind of making everything look ugly and, you know, those sorts right. of things. And then previously that, you know, that, that shorts content wasn't even connected to the history of, or that that wasn't even considered in terms of the recommendation for the long-term content and they're fixing that now. So it's like, right. they're really turning it into a platform where you can come on and you can just enjoy whatever it is that you want. So like, if you want to just sit there in the short self and enjoy that, you know, that type of content, you get it. If you want to come in, you want to join or enjoy some long-term long form content or watch some tutorials or something, then you got that. You know, if you want to hang out in a live stream like this, you got that. It's awesome. And they also are now, you know, they're also uh, uh, featuring podcasts now as well. They've got a whole tab for that, which is also cool. So, you know, having all of these different options, it makes it to where, you know, it will end up being the like go-to spot for whatever it is that you want which is pretty great it's it's a battle all these platforms are mm -hmm. they're literally battling each other for for eyes for eyeballs they want you know facebook wants everybody on facebook youtube wants everybody on facebook or on on youtube TikTok wants everybody on TikTok. so they all keep up in the ante they all keep adding these features at, at TikTok, TikTok is a trailblazer trick tri trick talk tick talk they're <laughs> they're usually the first to do something in terms of like a new feature when it comes to long form content. So like YouTube has to catch up and then exceed. They, you know, they've got to pass up TikTok. And what's that going to do? It's going to make TikTok go, okay, crack the knuckles and get back on it. So, I mean, I think it's right. an awesome time to be a creator because they're just going to keep making it better for us and make it hopefully easier for us to, to get our, our videos in front of people. And get paid. Yeah, they'll be fighting for the viewers and fighting for yes. the creators. Yeah, it's going yes. to be, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, and in both of those scenarios, we win as we content win. creators. We win. So really quick, the um, Elliot family of seven Super says, will older, short, will older shorts pay off later financially? I'm not sure. Not um, so as yet. part of you know that particular leak, there wasn't a lot of details that actually came out of it. But, um, but when it comes to if the older shorts, if when they turn that on, if like all of a sudden, if you've got a thousand shorts that they all have ads on them, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Um, but as soon as that, as soon as, you know, that information comes out, you'll definitely see it in the news segment. So make sure that, you know, if regardless of what the title is, make sure that you always check out on those news segments on Friday, because that's where that type of information will be, uh, will be shared. Everything. The uh, magic next question the that we have, what were you gonna say, D? I was gonna say everything's magic in the chat says shorts made me famous. 22 million views with one short and 45,000 subscribers from that one short. What else can I say? Boom. That right. being said, not all views are equal. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Yeah. But I mean, that's serious success. I that's know um, Tinkerman Mitch, who yeah. 
Tinkerman Mick, who um, hangs out here yep. from time to time. He grew his entire channel over 100,000 subscribers. I think now he's around 200 and something thousand subscribers, but all of that was on YouTube Shorts as well. Right. Some people have grown channels to over a million subscribers in a really short amount of time using YouTube Shorts. So you yeah. know, if you're really good at yeah. making shorts and your content is more of like a broad topic uh, content, like you can really really ride that uh you can really ride that out um yeah, the power of purpose has a track. question here says so is it worth starting a TikTok channel to try and bring people over to your youtube channel so this is a really good question so in my opinion and d i'd like yours on this too okay um, i think that if you're going to be making vertical content that you should put it on the different platforms so if you're going to do it anyway then it just takes you a little bit of extra time to do it and as part of that another thing to consider with all of the different platforms is you have a couple of choices to make one of those is i'm going to repurpose everything which means i'm going to make a piece of vertical content. Um, I'm going to put it on YouTube short. So I got to make sure it's under 60 seconds. I'm going to put it over on Instagram reels and I'm going to put it over on TikTok. That's one choice. And then you have the other choice, which is I'm going to make content that is vertical, that is specific for the platform. And if you do right. it for the platform, that opens you up a little bit because then you can put longer form content up on TikTok, for example. So then right. that gives you the option to where you can say, okay, I'm, I'm going to repurpose stuff or I'm going to make things that are just a little bit more appropriate for the platform. But the first step would be if you're already making vertical content or you plan to, go ahead and make that TikTok account. Go ahead and start repurposing your YouTube shorts over to there. Make sure you put them over there before it goes up to YouTube shorts. You do not want to upload it to YouTube shorts and then download it and then put it on TikTok because or vice versa. YouTube is putting a watermark versa. on your shorts. Right. So what you wanna do is upload you know, an original video natively over to TikTok. And then in your bio, um, you can use TubeSpanner for this actually. Um, I got a link to that in the description, but in your bio, um, you can put a link tree of sorts or a social bio page to where if they click on that, you can show them, hey, this is my Instagram, this is my YouTube channel, this is my website if you sell stuff, whatever. And then that just gives you that opportunity to, to share with people all the other places that they can find your content. In addition to that, you can even say in the videos, you know, you can mention from time to time something that happened on your YouTube channel or that you have a YouTube channel or whatever the thing is, once you you start getting views on your videos over there. Any thoughts on that, D? Yeah, I think that's a solid strategy. The most important thing is just don't download from one platform and re-upload with their watermark on it. Yeah. Yep, that's gonna be that's a no-no. And a lot of people do that because it's lazy. They do, it's easy, yeah. Yeah. Science-Based Fitness says, would you recommend using less competitive search titles than after the video starts performing, modifying the title with something that has more competition? So um, when it comes to YouTube search, if you're specifically targeting YouTube search, instead of thinking of it from the perspective of, I'm going to use more competitive or less competitive search titles and then change it, I would think try to think of it from the perspective of, um, I'm going to write a title that is going to work well in YouTube search if somebody's looking for this type of content, but it's also going to be compelling enough and identifiable enough that if somebody sees it on their homepage or suggested next to another video on YouTube, that they're also going to be likely to click it. That's gonna take a little bit more workshopping in terms of, okay, so I'm you know trying to get this to show up in YouTube search, but I need to also make it compelling enough to where if somebody's not looking for it, they can still identify that it has something to do with fitness and it's compelling enough to where they would still want to click on it based on how you package it up through your thumbnail and title. So instead of looking at it from like, I'm only going after this one place, YouTube search, try to, I, I think you would be better served instead of changing the title up to try to, you know, make things change at different times, I think you'd be better served with spending more time on your the thumbnail and title and thinking of it from the lens of, okay, I'm trying to get this to show up in search, so I'm gonna make sure that I do follow some best practices there in terms of like a keyword or a keyword phrase, but I'm also wanting to make sure that if somebody, if this shows up on somebody's homepage, that they're gonna click it too. That's the, um, that's the thing that I would recommend in that case. Any thoughts, D? No, I'm on board. I want to I tackle this here. So handgun safe research misunderstood what I said. He says the vertical content permitted in America is not permitted in China. Don't make the mistake of thinking the Chinese um, are showing us where TikTok will take us. Okay, the, I'm not talking about what's permitted. I'm talking about, talking the, about tech. the technology. I'm talking about the technology in terms of where this sort of thing is going to be driven. I'm talking about how TikTok is integrated into their media. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing, of course, it might not be CNN, but I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more integrations with these platforms with some sort of other media sites. Th that was what I was saying. I'm not talking about what's allowed here and what's allowed there. Hey, really quick, um, Colin Michael says, how are you doing the duplicate effect on a live stream? 
So um, this, you can also like modify this as well. We can have like background graphics and things like that. Um, we actually, I sent Roberto Blake a link, so I'm not sure if he's gonna come on or not. Um, he mentioned earlier that he wants to come on, so I sent him a link, but I'm not sure. He hasn't responded or seen the message yet, so that was 23 minutes ago, so hopefully he'll come on. But um, but you'll see if he does that it actually expands out even more um, as more you know people come on. You can have up to 12 people in here, but for yeah. this, I use a service called StreamYard. Um, if you go to StreamYard.com, you'll see that of course I got links to it in the description um, as well but that's the that's the service that makes it easy to bring on guests like this pin your comment to the screen <laughs> you know that kind of stuff what's up Colin um, let's see here so next up we've got um let's see here Jerry says is this a joke about the Nimmin I think this is a joke about the uh Nimmin brothers oh I see what you're doing there okay gotcha he's saying what? because you know because we look the same so he's like, how am I doing it to where it looks like I'm you and you look like you? Okay, sorry. Took me a minute. Yeah, thanks ha, for the clarity ha, on that ha, one. Ha, yeah, ha. got it, got it, got it. Okay, I'm sorry. Colin. <laughs> Good one, Colin. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Good so one, let's Colin. talk about some, let's talk about some, uh, let's talk about some shorts since this is the, uh, you know, since these on here and we're, you know, we're talking about shorts and I know D's, you know, going to be doing, uh, covering a lot of YouTube short, you know, information on his YouTube channel, um, yep. you know, here over the next, you know, who knows. Um, so, you know, you know, let's have that conversation here um, about YouTube shorts. Yeah, first I want to have the conversation how you're a little bit slow picking that up and you just explain StreamYard to Colin, who's like a play button holder, and I believe he streams with StreamYard himself. Streams with StreamYard, so. yeah, I know, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, I'm trying to like focus on our conversation, change a bunch of stuff here, contact yes. Roberto, like, you know, I'm doing yes. like 20 different things yes. over here, so, you know, sometimes I can fall behind like that. <laughs> okay, great question so, here, Virginia um, Scratcher. What is the optimum link? length of a short fantastic question. question okay you can currently on youtube make it up to 60 seconds the goal i would say this is you're in through trial and error and through your own ability the goal is to get people to complete the short and if if possible even rewatch some of the shorts so when you look at audience retention with a short it might say 72 percent, or it might say 112 percent, or 140 percent because people will loop into that and sometimes rewatch it. So the goal is to get people to complete the short. So however long you need to make your shorts to get people to complete them, or at least get as far into the short as possible. So if that's 15 seconds, rock out with 15 second shorts. If that's 60 seconds, do that. But always, you know, YouTube is going to reward those who can bring you more watch time. Yeah. And um, with that as well, one thing that I do want to let you know is that YouTube does have a free resource for anybody that's interested in making shorts for the YouTube channel. They have a free resource. It's I think they called it the YouTube Shorts Guide. So you might yeah. want to hop on Google and just look for the YouTube Shorts Guide. It'll be official an official Google you know website that will have it. Um, but I mentioned it I think two live streams ago or two news segments ago. So if you just go to that particular one, you'll be able to see it in the video description um, and you can download it there. But they talk about things in that particular in that particular guide, um, like, you know, making sure that you hook the viewer when they come into your video, because like Dee was talking about earlier, that first thing they start experiencing, just like in normal videos, when they first, I'm saying normal now, but who knows what's gonna be normal later. But when, it, when they first come into your um, video and they start experiencing that, what happens, you know, at that very beginning is important. So they put that in the guide to make sure that, you know, everybody's clear that you need to make sure that you're hooking viewers and doing interesting stuff as they first come into the video. Um, they talk about looping. And I personally am weird about looping. It causes the videos to perform well, but I think it's a little bit misleading. So I think it's a little bit unethical when it comes to, you know, what causes right. the, the shorts to do well. But one of the things that they do mention in there is they mention um, looping your videos, meaning that you want to create some type of, in some, you know, some cases you want to create a seamless ending with the beginning of your short. And by doing that, it fools people into watching your short for a longer period of time than they should have if it was just a regular piece of content. Um, on this, on that side of things, Instagram, when you come to the end of it, they'll actually tell you, they'll say, you know, yeah. watch again, they stop it and they say, watch again. And then you have the option to click to watch it again on YouTube and TikTok, They don't do that. And people will just loop it. And then you're halfway through the short again. And you're like, oh my gosh, I just realized that, you know, I've watched this part already. So it's a little bit misleading um, in my opinion. And I don't think that's the best approach. And I think it's unfortunate that these platforms, um, all of them, um, with the exception of Instagram, that, that their model for this is based on misleading their viewers, especially when the things that they prioritize is the viewer and the viewer experience. But apparently people don't have a problem with it. That's just a personal thing <laughs> because people do it and it causes the videos to perform well. And apparently nobody else is complaining about it. So 
I, I have a few things to say about it. Number one, uh, so TikTok did this first in terms of looping and an entire genre of uh, creative editors popped up on TikTok for loopers. So if you go to TikTok and just put for like loop or looping loopers, something like that, you're going to find an entire subgenre of editors. Do you think you'd be able all, to find that on YouTube as well? Are they doing it? Are they doing it here? Have you seen this? I here? haven't looked yet, but I'm going to guess that they're probably bringing the same videos over because they're hugely successful. And what they do, it's not just, oh, I'm going to loop a video. So see, TikTok can allow you to have up to three minutes and six minutes and 10 minute videos, right? So what they do is they make videos so perfect that you lose track of where you're at and you lose track that the loop happens. Nice. It's incredible some of the stuff those guys are doing over there. So yeah, looping within itself is has become like an editing niche on TikTok. It's probably going to happen here on YouTube too, and it's really cool to watch. Um, but I do think it's kind of misleading how YouTube is like, yeah, get your people to loop. That's yeah, seems kind yeah, of TikTok too, like you know, like like both of those but, platforms. I, I think they'll resolve all that stuff in the future, or let's keep it you know as I, it is. If if you know if if it's not really bothering people you know that much. Hey, yeah, really quick also, I just want to let everybody know that's hanging out here. Um, so there's two things that I want to cover. One, I want to talk to you really quick um, in case you're coming in for the big announcement. I'm going to talk about that here in just a second. Um, but I also want to let you know, since Dee's on screen here right now, because normally you see him in the chat, um, um, he is actually the one that um, that has done almost everything for uh, Creator Mix. And Creator Mix is a free music service that we put together for YouTube content creators. So if you need music for your live streams, if you need them for your videos, you can find out, um, you can use our music without having to worry about like copyright issues. So if you go to creatormix.com, I got it, you know, right up here at the top of the screen, um, then you can uh, download videos over there. Or if you want to stream it in the background or just listen to music, you can do that on Spotify. Just look for Creator Mix um, on Apple Music. Amazon uh, Music, and you can also just kind of stream that in your backgrounds when you're live streaming as well. So just wanted to make sure that everybody you know knew um, about that also. Now the announcement um, or the you know news, the thing that we're actually kind of talking a little bit about right here is that when it comes to um, YouTube, uh, the New York Times got their hands on an audio clip um, or some audio from a internal YouTube meeting. And one of the things that were shared in that particular audio clip was that they were talking about how they are going to, and it seems like it's gonna be something that's happening you know, relatively soon, that they're going to be putting ads on YouTube Shorts, um, which is a really big win for Shorts creators. And I saw the Super Chat come in, I'm gonna answer your question here in just a second, um, you know, cause this relates to Shorts as well, that's why I was waiting on it. Um, but in addition to that, if you're a new content creator, you're somebody that's trying to get into the YouTube Partner Program, another thing that's happening is that YouTube is also going to be lowering according to this you know conversation um youtube is also going to be lowering the requirements to get into the partner program so you know if you're somebody that's like hey i'm, I'm trying to get into the partner program so i can you know get some extra you know ad money or so i can go full time or whatever the thing is um they're going to make that process a little bit easier for you as well which is huge news especially if you're somebody that's just coming in and you know just trying to you know get into the partner program so you can start getting some rewards um some financial rewards from the content that you are creating and really quick um, Melinda Elliott says, I only do shorts. Am I going to be in trouble for watch hours? Um, so before in the past, getting into the partner, the partner program of shorts, your watch hours didn't count. Um, with the update that they're, that they're doing, once they do it, I'm not sure if that's gonna change things or not. And that might be part of that lowering of the requirements to help the people that are having shorts channels be able to monetize in an easier way. But at this moment in time, I'm not 100% sure exactly how that's going to work and exactly how things are going to be changed um, around you know, your watch time credits for getting into the partner program for shorts. Um, so we'll find out you know, soon enough, but as of right now, um, um, as, as, as this conversation is happening, your shorts watch time doesn't count towards getting you into the partner program, but that might change in the future, but I'm not 100% sure yet. While you take a breath, I'm going to kind of backpedal a little bit because we were talking about YouTube shorts in terms of length. We were talking about looping. Uh, I want to say two things. One, because uh, I saw this in the chat, and this is true. So audience retention by itself isn't the main factor in determining if, if a short's going to succeed or not, or if a short will succeed. I have some of my shorts that have a lot of loopability, I guess, which has increased the audience retention, but they're still slow growing. So there's you know other things like relevance and all of that stuff that are still involved. So it's not just one metric. Like anything else, there's multiple metrics when it comes to the success of a video. Number two, YouTube has since removed this, but when they first released YouTube shorts, they recommended 15 seconds. 
that that's what YouTube officially said when they first rolled this out. I sense I don't see that anymore on any of their shorts information, but that was the first thing they re recommend is try making a short for 15 seconds. And the goal wasn't 15 seconds. The goal was getting someone to complete the short. And I, I believe that they felt that 15 seconds is a reasonable time to try to get someone to actually complete the video. But now you got to look at your data, look at where people are falling off and say, okay, I need to get people to complete my short or get close to completing it. And then just uh, adjust accordingly. And on that note, at last, the Sith Lord of YouTube, Roberto Blake. Roberto Blake, my man, what's happening? How are you doing? There he is. I am doing awesome. In fact, actually, now I'm doing better now that I turned the other light on there. There you yeah, go. Yeah, your That's audio, I think, is coming in a tad low. What about now? There we go. Much better. And you don't hear anything in the background with it, yeah? Oh, good on good. my end. Okay, good. Yeah, I think we're yeah. good. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, so Roberto, man, so we are talking about YouTube Shorts. We're talking about yes. the um, the audio leak that um, that came out, um, and that's the conversation ah. that we're having right now. So, uh, so what's going on, my man? So what are your thoughts on YouTube Shorts? Okay, so there's there, – I, I have several thoughts on YouTube Shorts. All right. But I have to be careful cuz I actually know that I actually know the truth. The leak is not the the what is not the complete version of what's actually happening. I actually know. So I have to be a little okay. careful. I have to be a All little right. careful. But what I'll say is YouTube will never be the same. YouTube Shorts opportunities are going to be expanding. And the thing is I wouldn't use the phrase lowering the requirements as much as I would use the phrase monetization is expanding. Okay. Well, they they make... like part of that was that they are lowering the requirements as well. So they have the expanding side, um, but they mm -hmm. also mentioned that they're going to be lowering the requirements also. It's tricky to interpret the phrase what lowering means, though, because I think there's a lot of what people assume lowering the requirements means versus what it actually is. Okay. Right. Um, explain. Like, let it out. Well, like, what, what do you got? I, 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 I signed an NDA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like I, I'm not gonna tell you like what the. So I'll what are just, your thoughts then? Let Let's uh, know your thoughts. My thoughts is if you're um a shorts creator, next year is gonna be really good for you, um, and that I think that one of the best things that YouTube's ever done is they give creators real equity by giving us a percentage of what YouTube as a company earns, and it's the problem I've always had with creator funds. I've always found creator funds to be a nice incentive, but I find them problematic because it's just more people eating the same pie and the piece is getting lesser and lesser and lesser. So you get the crumbs. It's not tied to the top line success of the platform. When we get YouTube ad revenue, if YouTube, if we succeed, YouTube succeeds. That's the deal. So when it comes to something like that, I believe that what's fair in terms of monetization is giving the creators a percentage of what makes the platform its top line revenue. So it's like, you make money, we get money. It's the same reason I advocate for affiliate marketing and affiliate links, even though everyone wants to cry, affiliate marketing is a scam. It's like, no, hey, you, you made the company money, take Roberto. 30%. Roberto, it's mm. just us three right here. There's nobody else. You can tell us uh. what it is. We're not going to tell you. I can't. I can't. Not true. We're not going to. Yeah, not true. Not true. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's say, D working on you he there. He fell for that one, so I'm, he's not going to fall for it again. Right. <laughs> yeah, no. So, so again, the, not the a main bribe. thing, the main not thing I would say is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of interesting data, right? There's a lot of interesting data. We know that there are 30 billion views a day for YouTube shorts, and we know that over uh, 1 billion of the logged in users on YouTube worldwide watch YouTube shorts. We know that YouTube shorts has accumulated over a trillion views since its launch. With a Those T. Are, with a yeah, T. with a T. Yeah. With a T, yeah. a trillion. So like that's not a small amount of attention in terms of capitalization market share. And we all know that I've had my reservations about YouTube shorts, short form content. I yeah. still think from a mental health and psychology standpoint, those Ooh. are some, still some legitimate reservations to have around that's what this a does. whole other conversation. It is. And <laughs> misinformation. And a, yeah. And yeah. the misinformation yeah. and fake news and things like yeah. that. There's like, yeah. there's problems, but it's a different yeah. conversation. But in terms of creator economy and creator monetization, what I will say is that this is going to change YouTube forever and it's going to make it feel 
like you can it's going to be great for small youtubers it's going to be great for short creators and it's going to make you feel like youtube was a little bit back in the old days just a little bit just a little bit the youtube that made markiplier and pewdiepie that youtube is dead but i think we got something better in exchange for it for the up and coming creators and for the creator middle class i think that you're not going to be middle class yeah i don't I like think that. yeah I think middle class creators are the future. I do not think we need more Markiplier, more PewDiePie. I love those creators. We do not need more ultra mega famous Markiplier, Mr. Beast, PewDiePie. What we have to do and what YouTube's mission from my point of view, YouTube's mission is not to keep replicating those viral household names, but to expand the creator middle class. And then what happens from there is you expand the ecosystem of the creator economy of people who are able to build teams and turn these YouTube channels into business. And then regular creators become um, not just new media, we become mainstream media. We replace what came before. We replace the old mainstream media. And you don't have to be a famous YouTuber to do that. Speaking of, of just changes on YouTube in general. And I believe something was said about this. Todd may have said something about it during the, the conversation with Mr. Beast at VidCon. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to see if, if everyone in here, including uh, Nick and Roberto, if you're seeing the same things. YouTube is recommending to me more and more really small channels that are relevant to the things that I'm looking for. Where before, it yeah. was always just massive view channels and just big, you know, like here's 200,000 views, 50,000. Now I'm getting recommended like 200 views. I'm like, oh, who's this channel? And I click in, you know, 200 subscribers. I'm like, this is fantastic. I was, I, I had a coffee with Nick today and I was trying to let him know of a YouTube channel that I came across. I didn't remember his name, so I, I couldn't find it. Um, but it was a brand new channel. He's got a really tiny following, but he's making fantastic videos. And YouTube has shown me his content a couple of times. And that's where I first started knowing it. And now I'm, I'm paying attention. I'm like, wow, they've barely got any views and YouTube is showing me this. So I think the, the the YouTube hates small creators and, and YouTube doesn't allow small creators to get their foot in the door. I think those days are over. I know that it's over for a fact because I don't, I don't, I do not link out to my Roberto Blake speaks channel, my Roberto Blake highlights channel that is just clips from my speaking engagement and my interviews. Yeah. And if you've been following me on Twitter, if you guys are not following me on Twitter, follow me at Roberto Blake and Twitter. I'm not just saying that to get my numbers up. I tweet out more YouTube analytics dashboard data than anybody in the creator economy. And I'm not just mm -hmm. saying that. I mean, it's like, it's a goal that I have to make that true. And I, that's why it is true. I daily share screenshots from multiple YouTube dashboards that I have. And some of them have less than a thousand subscribers. And I'm showing you the analytics. YouTube does not hate small creators. I do nothing to promote this channel using my big channel. And what happens is this has like 360 subscribers. It gets tons of uh, views for that size. And what happens is the videos are getting, I'm not using any thumbnail design, automated YouTube generated thumbnails, right? So almost just like YouTube shorts. And these are not YouTube shorts that I'm posting either. These are all one minute to four minute videos. So even in terms of, oh, I have to make super, super long content like you guys do. No, you don't. I'm making one to four minute videos. Yep. This has been my challenge. I've uploaded almost 50 days in a row every day so that means oh youtube will kill off my video if i upload a new video i need to let this video uh run and not upload anything nope not true i've been uploading for 50 days in a row seeing consistent results retention on these videos every single video 55 to 75 percent retention every single one no thumbnail design youtube's auto generating the thumbnails i don't recommend that they would do better if i did a thumbnail and some of these videos have 2,000 views. I have 300 subs. It has 2,000 views, 6,000 views. And it's all based on the topic and title of what people are interested in. And all these views, it's not search. It's not search. So even as a small YouTuber, if you don't want to leverage search, I still think it's a good idea. But if you don't want to leverage search, these are all homepage views. YouTube is so good that I don't have to promote, drive any traffic. 92% of the traffic on every single video is YouTube homepage. YouTube's algorithm has gotten that good for small YouTubers. You just have to make a topic and a title that someone would actually care about, a thumbnail that might be able to stop them from scrolling, and then you got to deliver on that video's proposition. The, I'll tell you the other thing about these videos. They get that retention because there's no intro, there's no sales pitch, there's no call to action, there's no fluff, and there's no raw outro. content. It's raw content. It raw content. starts abruptly and it ends abruptly. 
and there's nothing in between. So as a small YouTuber, if you start abruptly and end abruptly, it's pure content, you can win. I, I think go, oh, go ahead, Nick. Go ahead, D. Oh, I was going to say. Just really what, quick, um, just um, Joy Build City says, what do you think about creating a short series release backwards so it plays in order when someone wants to binge my shorts? Don't worry about it. So we'll answer order. that in a second. D, go ahead and go ahead and say what you're going to say, and then we'll talk about that. Yeah, I mean, based on what Roberto says, and by the way, if you're not following Roberto on Twitter, I highly, highly recommend it because he's everywhere. constantly posting stuff. Yeah, well, first of all, Roberto is everywhere. I got a link everywhere. to his book down he's in the description, on, yeah. by the way, if you want to check that out too. Yeah, yeah, dude, congratulations on that, by the way. I yeah. don't have it yet. Um, I'm hoping to pick it up when I'm in the USA, but I just want to, dude, knock You're coming it out to the Vid Summit. I'll, I'll give you yeah. both signed copies. Yeah, man, I appreciate right. that. So congratulations on that. Uh, but Roberto's everywhere, and I follow him on Twitter. Like It's like a daily thing, and he's constantly posting just amazing nuggets when it comes to YouTube. So follow him everywhere, but pay attention to his Twitter especially. But what I was going to say in regards to what he just said, I, I think it's fair to say the days of what we all believe YouTube is and how we have to do things, that's over. Like the days of intros are over. The days of just 20-second end screens are over. The days of just wasting the viewer's time are over. Uh I think every, everything has changed in terms of how we present our content and, it, and it's continually evolving as well. A hundred percent. I agree. In yeah. that evolution side of things, you know, that's one of the things I was saying earlier in terms of like, you know, we can get stuck on like how things were, or we can yeah. progress and involve, you know, with the, uh, you know, with the platform, because, you know, as we walk down this road, so to speak, like that's yeah. the choice that we have. So like, if you want to tap into these particular features that, you know, can also bring lots of attention to what it is that you're doing, then in that particular case, like, you know, you got to do the thing, so to speak. So really yeah. quick, let's, let's answer this question about um, what you think about creating a short series backwards. So it plays in order thoughts, fellas. Don't. It doesn't matter. It's I would not do it. And the thing is, shorts consumers are not like regular YouTube consumers. You're still thinking in an analog, linear YouTube yes. fashion if you're thinking that. Shorts should stand alone. If you want to do them as parts of a series, I learned this from movie recap channels. You can post part one of something if it makes sense and let people watch it and go into the order. And that actually is helpful that, oh, they'll go and they'll do it themselves. You don't need to post it in the order. It doesn't matter. These music, movie recap channels, they post different stuff all the time. Yeah. But yet there's a part one, part two, but it might be five videos that are between part one and part two of something from five different other movies. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I agree with Roberto on that. It, it doesn't matter in terms of. In terms of the order that you put your shorts, I wouldn't overthink it. Shorts are shorts. And, and as far as I'm concerned, and you guys correct me if you want to add something to this, uh, I believe there's two real strategies for shorts. One, a short is a short within itself. It can stand alone by itself and be the short. No, Out of context, it's the short. It could loop. It could be whatever. It is the short. Number two, it's used to lead into a longer form piece of content. I don't know which one is going to be better for you, but I would try both of those. In terms of, let's say you have a channel with tips. You could do one tip in the short or two tips or maybe even three tips and then tell them if they want more, go watch this video and link that video in your description. But as far as I see it, those are the two real pieces of, um, in terms of strategy, the short's either a standalone short or it leads to something else. And I wouldn't overthink it beyond that. I have an analogy for food. I have a food analogy. Because yep. you know, the food analogies is a thing we all can relate to, right? Yeah. It's going to make us all hungry. I'm going to brunch after this. Um, I, I just want to let you know, I have a melting Asahi smoothie bowl over here. So I Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Here's how you need to think of YouTube content in terms of the three main formats of YouTube. Shorts are a Pause. snack. Really quick. Am I wrong in thinking that? Or do you agree with that being the strategy? Yes. Yeah, so no, I'm 100% agree. You're 100%. Yeah. And I'm going to make it clear with the analogy. Mm. Shorts are a snack. Regular long form videos, regardless of their length, are an entree. Mm -hmm. Okay. And live videos are a buffet line. Ooh. Like That's it. it. So, again, with long form videos, like they're a buffet. And the thing is, hopefully, we go back and we start making either chapters or even literally like sections of our long form live streams. In our case, we just get pay somebody else to do it instead of us taking the time to do it. But um, the thing that I think makes the most sense 
is to think of your short form videos as a snack. It's an appetizer. Like it's a wet sure palate. It's like, these are starters. Like you go to Chili's, it's like, oh, do you want to start with something? It's like, yeah, bring me the chips and salsa or bring me the um, spring rolls or whatever. And you just are snacking on that. You can snack through a bunch of them. And if you go through too many of them, it'll like, you'll get full up on that. And then you're like, okay, you know what? I don't want a full meal. It was enough and everything. I'm just going to have the spring rolls and Dos Equis and I'm out. Right. Or you'll run through shorts for an hour and you'll be like, yeah, I'm going to go throw this up. Um, Cause I've right, been sitting here for an it. hour. I can't believe you, I just you, spent you, that much time here. Just yeah, right. from video to video. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. you, oh, you're, you're gorged. Going yourself. to the bathroom for this. Right. You're gorged yeah, right. yourself. You gorge yourself. So it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm out. It's like, right. so you could do that. Or you could say, it's like, okay, I had a snack. And that wed my appetite. And now I'm really hungry, but I actually know the food's going to be good now. I know the food's going to be good now. It's like, oh, okay. I didn't know that if I wanted to commit to like a $40 meal here, but it's like, this was so good that it's like, yeah, I'm going to have like the actual like $40 meal. It's like, oh, this was like, I had good meals at this place. I've had good snacks at this place. Good appetizers, good entrees. You know what? Oh, they have a buffet line. You know what? I'm going to bring the fam. It's all you can eat. Let's go. And we're gonna just sit here all Sunday or all Saturday at the buffet and just have a good old time with the family. And that's why I think live streams are. So again, you like single serving snack, like I'm in and I'm out, or I can just gorge on snacks, eat junk food all day, or I can have actual meals and they might be healthy. They may not be healthy meals. They may or may not be healthy meals. And then there's I also believe, the buffet I believe life. the words you're looking for is shorts and short form intolerant. I believe mm. is what it's called. <laughs> short form intolerant. Oh god. Is that what it's called? Hey, upset so- your belly? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah is that is that a grumbling sound that i'm hearing in your, in your stomach so uh Super the shots. next question that we um have here says uh and this is from johnny's weekend says will a new platform of shorts and middle class creators still transform to long form video um trend has been videos under eight minutes so first when it comes to youtube shorts um they've updated the algorithm recently to where now um, in the past, if somebody interacted with your shorts, they didn't have anything to connect that viewer to your long form content outside of the subscribe button. Um, now they have it to where somebody watches your shorts and they interact with your shorts and they get a positive experience from your shorts and YouTube detects that, then they are likely to show them your long form content. So they are already building that bridge between the short form and the long form content. In addition to that, they've also released a feature to where you can sample parts of your long form content into YouTube shorts as well. And that actually includes a direct link back to the video right there on screen as well that it was sampled from. So they're already creating all of these connections to where if somebody's enjoying one, then they can recommend the other, which is going to be a win because this is one of those things to where, you know, part of YouTube is people come here for content, but people also go to Netflix for content. But they go to Netflix to watch, you know, like high produced content, but there's no real connection on Netflix. People come to YouTube for the content that they want, but also for the connection with the creators that they're watching. So when that's happening, the win with this is that when they start, you know, recommending one from the other, then as people start to get to know you and like you and like the content that you're putting out, then you get to hit them in all of these different surfaces on YouTube, which is a which is a win all the way around. Yeah, yeah back I agree. to Roberta's analogy, which I think is fantastic. The, the key to that, in case somebody didn't pick that up, is just uh, that's all for the viewer, right? YouTube is giving every viewer who is hungry in all forms. Like if you just want a snack, you got it. If you want to go to a buffet, you got it. You want to eat dinner, you got it. And the restaurants who have all of those available, you know. I mean, and they even restaurant. have the download option in your <laughs> phone for when restaurant. you're offline in case you want to pack yeah. a lunch. Like yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's great. And the, here's the best part. Pack a lunch. And my, here's the here's the thing. If you go to the buffet line, you can put together a meal plate. You can put together as many meal plates as you want. And the thing is, if you got kids at the table, you can give them a little snack off of your plate too. So the thing is, in that analogy, or or you can tell them daddy's going out for milk and then just never go home. That's true too. <laughs> That's another conversation. Another conversation. Oh, but I, I bring this analogy great. up because YouTube podcast has not been getting enough attention, and the fact that right now. Uh, that's very surface level, but I think YouTube podcasting is the future. Uh, I think YouTube is coming for everybody's lunch. I think YouTube is going to be like, it's going to like bully everyone like Thanos and everything like that. I think like, uh, it's like, it's a uh, infinity. Uh, it's Gauntlet. like infinity, infinity, War. Right. infinity, infinity war. It's infinity war. Oh, okay. infinity the infinity war. stones. Cause like, here's the thing. It's like all the other platforms. You could look at them as the Avengers, the, you know, the original Avengers and like Thanos is just going to sit there and, or whoever had the original infinity stone, Thanos just, Thanos just going to come in and bully them. Just kind of like come in and take them and snap them away. Because mm-hmm. think about it. 
YouTube with this podcast exploration immediately became the biggest pl podcast platform immediately over Spotify, just like that. So it's like, oh, Spotify, uh, uh, I'm taking your stuff. It's like, oh, uh, TikTok, uh, I'm taking your stuff. It's like, and then with live streams, it's like Twitch, I'm taking your stuff. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think that this is like getting like serious as far as all these other, uh, the, you know, these other platforms in terms of YouTube's like, we will set the gold standard. You'll thank us later. You'll become stronger, you know, come back for us in the end game, but maybe not because I think you do. I think this time Thanos wins in the end game. So, I mean, you could take a live stream video or live stream podcast. You can cut that into one to four minute videos or one to eight minute videos and have clips and then have that. And then that's regular YouTube content. You could edit that down to regular YouTube content, but you could also take that same content and you can edit that into 30 second shorts. If there's a sound bite in a podcast or an interview, you can edit that down into a YouTube short. So I think that there's gonna be a reverse engineer and trickle down from live streamers and podcast into be able to siphoning more content out of this and it'll actually make sense. Yeah, I wanna take something out of the chat right now. So Six Bows is back. And the reason I'm addressing this because I keep seeing this popping up at YouTube comments, I see it on Reddit, I see it on Facebook with a similar comment when we talk about how YouTube has just built that bridge and certain channels don't believe it. So it says, my views are 94% shorts and it has not increased the views on my videos. I don't think shorts are connected at all. Here's the thing, because- They are now. 10 out of 10, 10, yeah, well, yeah, they are now. As of right now, as of like what? A week and a half ago, I believe. Yeah. Two, two weeks, Todd made two that weeks tweet. Ago. So they, yeah, two weeks. They are now. But 10 out of 10 times when I've looked into this further in someone's channel, it's always because the long form videos are not getting a lot of views to begin with. They might be 20 right. views, 40 views, 100 views. What's probably happening in your case is YouTube doesn't know enough about your audience yet to build that bridge between your shorts and the long form content. So as well, your channel grows- yeah, there's another side of go this ahead. too, yep, is is that, you know, if if you're getting 94% in your short, you also have to consider that somebody just swiped up and they started watching that. When it comes yep. to the long form content, making a you should be looking at the impressions that you're getting, yes. not necessarily the views that you're getting. And the reason right. that you wanna look at that is because it's possible that when people are interacting with your shorts, if they're enjoying your shorts, that YouTube is showing them your content, but it's possible that you're not getting people to click on your content. Yep. So because of that, it's more important, like right now, yeah. if you're trying to see like the connection there, it's more important that you're looking at the impressions. And when you see that the impressions are increasing, then that's where you think to yourself, like, okay, if my impressions are increasing, that means that YouTube is showing the content, but I just need to work on getting people to actually click on the content. So just because somebody enjoys your short and YouTube recommends them your video doesn't guarantee that you're gonna get that view. It just guarantees that YouTube is going to show them that video, or it doesn't guarantee it, but it's just that YouTube's gonna show them that video, but it's up to that particular viewer to if you can get them to click or not. That's why it's still important to make sure that you're learning how to make effective thumbnails, titles, you know, and, and come up with good video ideas and that it's also relevant to the audience that you're connecting with through shorts. Because if you have a short about something that isn't relevant to the audience um, topically that your long form content has, then in that particular case, then you're creating kind of like a, a wall in between that bridge or that bridge that they made, you've mm -hmm. turned it into a draw bridge instead. So what you gotta make sure that you're doing is you gotta make sure that the content that you're making in YouTube shorts is relevant to the content that you're making in long form. And then you also have to make sure that you're learning um, or you know fine tuning your ability Ability to get people to click on your on your videos because that's the the huge difference between the two is on shorts they just jump right into your content but on right. the recommendations when YouTube is showing them your content you still have to get people to respond to your content there and it goes even further than that so let's say that you get somebody to click on that video well let's say that you're way better right now I'm not saying that you know your videos are bad or anything like that because I haven't watched them I don't know but I'm just saying you know one of the things that could be causing the issue that you're having. Um, so if somebody does click on your video, let's say they quickly abandon your video and let's say that, you know, you're awesome at making YouTube shorts, but let's say you're still working on getting better at long form content. Well, in that particular case, what can happen is they might click on your stuff when they see it, but then if they don't respond positively to the video, um, in YouTube, I mean, you'd still be getting the views for that. But what I'm saying is if the people that they're showing it to, um, click on it, but they don't respond positively to the video, then that's going to limit the promotion that YouTube is going to give that video because when they are showing it to people and they are clicking on it, um, the experience that they're having there isn't competitive compared to the other options that they have to show that viewer. So you got to make sure that you're considering the whole situation instead of just saying, 
I'm getting views in shorts and people are liking those. So that guarantees me views. You still have to do the work on the, on the long form content as well. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Yeah. That you kind of jumped in and took a lot of that and somebody saying shorts will kill your channel RPM. Um, only from the perspective of the fact that it's doing aggregate RPM, but it's not real RPM. It doesn't actually affect the money that you're making. It just reflects on the way that it's being calculated. And so I wouldn't worry about that stat in terms of true RPM. And if you really want to see your true RPM from regular form videos, you could just go into the advanced mode of YouTube and then you'll see it because RPM is video to video, but it's also content type because guess what? Super chats will artificially inflate your RPM too. Yep. So it's like if shorts artificially decrease your RPM, super chats artificially inflate your RPM. And so do channel memberships because it does like anything that's a transaction base. So anything transactional and guess what? YouTube paid courses, which is coming in. Actually, you guys want to talk about the announcement, another monetization announcement? Because like, yeah, absolutely. Give me one second really quick. Um, True it to connection says tons charged. of gratitude for all the insights. So thank you for that. And the Florida um, Uber Eats driver. Super thank you for charged. the super sticker. I um, appreciate that as well. So yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that on the um, on the course side. So as we start talking about that on the course side, one of the things that I mentioned earlier in the stream is I was planning on um, having a monetization channel review today, um, but I'm not I'm not going to do that just because you know you guys came on in this conversation. You know I'm having a really good time here in the conversation, so I'll save that for next week. But sure. um, um, one of the things that. Roberto's wanting to talk about here is another monetization option that YouTube announced that they're going to make it to where you can offer courses directly from your YouTube channel. And one of the That's options huge. for this, just so you guys know, is, um, um, and this is where the, the, the monetization reviews was coming, um, was that I actually have a partnership now with Uscreen. Um, and through that, I'm actually going to be doing some of these, you know, monetization reviews, um, in the future, but Uscreen got, uh, dot TV is a course platform. So anybody interested in creating courses or creating exclusive content for your viewers, you can find that over at uscreen.tv. All right. I had to get that, you know, yes, no, I'm actually so doing talk something. About <laughs> I'm actually doing something with you screen, um, dot TV as well. I'm doing something with uscreen.tv as well. And what I'm doing is instead of going, uh, the course route with you screen, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making exclusive content and it's going to be more um, narrative and behind the scenes type content. And it's going to be a series that I'm, I'm considering calling um, Creator Confessions. And I think it's going to be interesting because I'm going to do some, uh, it's going to be very, I think, organic, collaborative, docu-series type thing. I want to talk to other creators about what they're, experiences, what they're going through, um, and not just the business and not just the success, but the, the highs, the lows, and I want them to get some things off their chest. And so I'm going to be filming stuff like that when I go to events and conferences. Plus, I'm also going to be filming kind of like my own confessional booth stuff and everything. So it's going to be a very reality TV play. So I think that's going to be uh, very dope. Um, you know, on the course side, I'm in talks with like Skillshare about doing something interesting. So we'll see what happens with that. But YouTube courses directly in platform, is going to be game changing yeah, for yeah. a lot of creators, especially in the yeah. DIY, the DIY space, right? So all the crafters, a lot of creators, men and women who are at home working with their hands, doing tools, crafters. We saw a lot of crafters doing in DIY. Doing cooking channels. Cooking doing doing tools. Tools. We saw those you know, full courses on how to cook different meals and stuff like that. Yeah. We saw those people blow up during the pandemic. Yeah. And the thing is, I feel that this is going to be tremendous and I feel like the sweet spot in terms of the price point is going to be between fifteen and twenty-five dollars, and it's going to be like eight to fifteen videos is what it's probably going to come out to be for this and everything like that. And I think that's a sweet spot because I feel like that's in line with like YouTube super chats and what audiences are willing to pay for something or for exclusivity in some way. So I feel it ends up being similar to that and almost like an expansion of what YouTube does with the channel memberships. So the thing is, and this is like, and for anyone who's hypercritical of this, it's not really different from a Patreon model. I know people like to say that YouTube courses or courses in general are scammy or scummy and, oh, people just want your money and want your wallet. And those people are kind of full of crap because everything costs money and people are happy to do it. And I don't see it any different than a premium Twitch subscription, which a lot of times Twitch streamers, let's be honest, they don't necessarily do exclusive videos or content, but do a tier three sub, it's $20 a month which I have nothing against. 
That's a fan deciding how they want to spend their money. I think that this is going to be great for creators in DIY, crafting, tutorials, photography, cooking. I think this is going to be uh, great for fitness channels. I think this is going to be great for, because here's what the problem is that it eliminates too. A lot of creators would like to sell some kind of digital product or course, but they don't know how to set up online hosting. They don't know how to get a domain name or they don't want to do it. Or some creators who are monetized, let's say you're monetized, you're in the YouTube partner program, you're making some money. You may not have the money to do a, a platform like um, Padia or Teachable or Kajabi like I do. You may not have that money, but you know that if you could sell something directly to your audience that you have a hundred or a thousand people that would support you. And then you're going to be able to do it. And then you're going to be able to invest in your content and grow more and do this more consistently. And so the people who want to support you doing that, you'll have these options just like you have channel memberships for people who want to support you and you make exclusive videos there as well. So I, that's what I think. Just keep going. These tips, ba basic practices work for everyone, but you do have to implement them correctly. And you're not, I looked at your channel, you're not doing that correctly. So I would recommend that you go back and kind of really, sometimes we, we, we consume information and we think that we're implementing it just because we consumed it, but we really don't. So I would recommend to go back and really pay attention and look at some of the channel reviews that he's done and then say, am I doing this on my channel? Am I putting my playlist together? Am I titling I correctly? Like, and go back and do it that way. And I, I, I think you'll be all right. Just keep going. We all started where you're at now, Everyone but they work. They do, work. they do work. Anyone can improve. So, you can improve. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop improve. into a lightning round. So what the lightning Let's round go. is, is the lightning round is where you drop your question into the chat, but you put a Q in front <laughs> of it. And then we start just running through, you know, answers to answer your questions as fast as possible. And we'll actually rotate them uh, through everybody here during the stream. We're going to do this for a few minutes. Somebody, so, so if you have just a question, Roberto. go ahead and put a Q in front of your question so we know it's for us and not a, a side question in the chat. We're going to go ahead and just crush through some questions really quick. Trying to like keep, you know, trying to like no, this pull is this great. back together here. We're like, this so is great. Here, someone someone yeah. just called Roberto a flamethrower. That is never, nice. you are forever known That's as the flamethrower. Flame <laughs> That's nice. The That's torch. Nice. Well, you are known as the torch. Roberto the torch, Roberto, <laughs> so, yes, Roberto the torch nice. Blake. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. The very first one, um, we've got the, and this is from Phyllis uh, Care. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. It says, I just saw a channel with 30 live streams going on at the same time. How does one do that? So um, in order to do that, you use something called a VPS or virtual private server. Um, for example, there's a, a company called uh, Obubble um, that you can get these private servers on. They usually run about $50 a pop for a high quality, for a high quality stream. And, um, and then you set that up through their virtual private server so it doesn't actually come from your computer. And then that allows you to push out you know, all of those different live streams. So it starts getting a little bit complicated where you have to start getting into like RMTP um, things instead of just pushing the stream up by itself if you start doing multiple streams. But um, that's the actual service that you use to, uh, to do that. Um, good question though. So um, next one up. Okay, so how important are thumbnails and a description for YouTube Shorts? Um, He's taking that. In general, I'll say this. Okay, go ahead. In general, I think more people should focus on their topic, their title, and then their thumbnail. In terms of descriptions, I think descriptions are for the far minority of your viewers. And what I would do is I would decide whether you want to drive traffic to other YouTube videos that you want those same viewers to view because it has value for them. Or do you want to drive it to something like your own website or to your book or to an Amazon in affiliate link for whatever it is that you uh, is in your niche, whether that's your crafting, your photography, whatever. I think that description has to be for the minority of the viewers watching, but useful to anyone who could be watching, if that makes sense. I also think yeah, people need to put YouTube just chapters. In general. Oh, go ahead. Also, it's YouTube chapters is probably one of the most underutilized features in the platform. Yeah. And it's actually really helpful. And it does not hurt your watch time and retention the way people think. Cause, oh, people skip over blah, blah, blah. Like that's an assumption that people are making. And if people skip a part of the video that's not relevant to them, you still get the watch time for everything that is. And that could be more useful. And you could get your retention up by doing chapters, especially on longer videos. So uh, I think that people need to think about their description being helpful to the viewer instead of helpful to themselves. Yeah, I want to add to that in regards to the, the thumbnail on shorts. We don't know yet how this is all going to land. I'm currently making thumbnails for shorts. And here's the thing about shorts is a lot of your traffic isn't going to come from the shorts feed 
or even necessarily your own your own channel page where you don't show the thumbnail, you're getting shorts traffic through you know through browse through suggested etc. And as I just posted on my my uh, Twitter today. The short that I posted yesterday is now ranking in Google and they're showing the thumbnail on Google. But there are other videos underneath mine that are not shorts. And I just wonder, one, would they have shown it without the thumbnail? And two, if it didn't have a thumbnail, how would that video perform when put up against videos that are longer with thumbnails? So I would say, I don't think the thumbnail matters in terms of like, is a short gonna succeed? But in terms of like trying to get that extra foot in, right? Trying to go that extra mile, I'm going to continue making my thumbnails until I know definitively that it either matters or it doesn't. That's yeah, and, and as a part of that too, like if YouTube has a feature available for it, the typical best practice is to just use that feature. So, I, you know, like all of the features that they have connected to everything, like those are there for a reason, like Dee was saying, even though it might not actually show up, you know, on YouTube in some places, in some places it might, but um, in some places, if it doesn't show up there, you still have other places um, that, you know, that it might show up on the internet. So, um, so because yeah, of that, making sure I, that you are, you know, just using the feature if it's available um, is definitely kind of like a best practice when it comes to YouTube. Um, the next question focus... that we have is from Marcel on the beats. Marcel on the beats says, I do beats, so how can I grow? Thoughts? Ooh, good question. Let me take this Beat first. Channel. So I was I was just talking with Nick today. So I followed this, uh, his name is uh, El Dre. He, he teaches people how to do like lo-fi music on YouTube. He blew up on TikTok and it ended up catapulting him elsewhere because he started doing lo-fi versions of trending popular songs on TikTok. So a new song would come out, it would be hot, he would see it was trending, and he would make a lo-fi version of it. That's smart. So I think I think really that's smart. one way to grow. I mean, that's he, my blew reaction up, too. he blew up huge by doing that. So I would say think outside of the box, because right now nobody knows you, so the music that you're making is pretty much just going up into the void, right? So I would say try to think of a clever way to be seen first, come up with gimmicks, redo songs. And, and then once you start to build some sort of velocity and build some momentum, then start sneaking in your own stuff and, and then or start going out that way. Star Wars and or is dropping. I'd be making lo-fi mixes yes. of Star Wars music and yes. dropping it right now because Star Wars and or is out. And then when they have the and or theme or if you have Rogue One themes, yeah. I would do that and do callbacks to Rogue One from that. Take advantage of that. I, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's coming out. I'd be dropping that. Lo-fi or trap versions or EDM versions of Game of Thrones right now while uh, House of the Dragon is out. I would try tap into pop culture. I follow an amazing musician. His name is Samuel Kim. He, his channel is Samuel Kim Music. It's 1.6 million subscribers. And I've watched his entire journey since pretty much since he started. And he does exactly what Roberto said. And the thing that catapulted him is exactly what Roberto said. I watched him have like, you know, 50,000 subscribers and then just explode once he started doing things like the man. He does his own version of like the Mandalorian theme. He does his own version of all the Game of Thrones. Like he takes it, whatever's trending, doesn't matter what he did Black Widow, he does Superman, he does Black Panther, doesn't matter what it is, and he does his own version of it and puts it up on, on YouTube. Yeah, he'll get a copyright, he'll probably get a copyright, copyright claim copyright for that. Thing. Doesn't matter, just he, he's able to do other things and he, he has other ways to, to monetize this channel. Yeah, don't worry about the claims if you're trying to grow yeah. from that. Don't worry about claims, people do it all the time and claims. Uh, Claims are not as big a deal for monetization right. if it's not egregious. Strikes, it rarely done anymore. Now all the companies just claim your stuff because yeah. and monetize it. They all just claim your stuff yeah. and monetize it now. Even if your channel is not monetized because YouTube now has the right to monetize and run ads on all creators' channels. Even That's also, by the way, in my point of view, that's also the reason they did that was a couple of fold. One, it was a uh, they could stop losing money when they have to suspend creators from monetization for cancel culture. So now instead of splitting half the money, they keep 100 percent. But the other reason is since a lot of big creators, uh, especially do copyright claim stuff and even small creators do copyright claim stuff, the they can appease the copyright holders by saying, well, we'll we run ads on everything and now you can claim those videos and get paid for them and run ads on them, even if they're not in the partner program. So I think that was part of the right to monetize policy, if I'm being honest. So I wouldn't worry about it. And the other thing is, if you do want to get around it, get a cover license. Uh, I use this. called a mechanical, a, mechanical huh? license. A mechanical, mechanical license. license. Yeah, mechanical yeah. license. And right. so like I use uh, DistroKid uh, personally to do stuff like that and also to distribute music um, in the music platforms. I have music that's in YouTube Music, Amazon, Spotify, Apple, and stuff like that. Just use a mechanical license. Uh, they're not that expensive either, so you, you can do that. And I think that's a, a way to go. Yeah. Nick and D, probably D especially, you probably know more about that than all of us. 
I don't want to school for that, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's you, do, yeah you know more yeah. about but, it. Than but all in of terms it. of social media, that's like a whole nother beast. So like I, you know, I would do just like what we're talking about. Do versions of what's trending. Do it your way. And if it's good, it's eventually going to catch on. That and wasn't you very still have to do fellas. The... We got to do better on this next one. Sorry. So. <laughs> Sorry man. Trying to bring the value, dude. Trying to bring value. Right? I know, I know, I know. I'm just, All I'm this free value. Back. The uh, the right, next question Roberto. we have here is from Shame Bento VR. Um, they Predatory. say, I'm a small VR gaming channel at 226 subs. Should I be changing my channel art every so often? Um, no. Um, just change it when you want to. Um, when it comes to your channel art, that's not going to be something that's going to like blow up your channel or anything no. like that. That's like that energy should be focused if you're wanting to focus on graphics, should be focused on your thumbnails. Um, yeah. Having that context in your header in terms of what it is that you offer in your channel is the best practice for that. Um, but you know how often you change it is completely irrelevant to how everything is going to perform on your YouTube channel. But what you do want to think about is if you are going to have everything branded, then you would want to try to have some type of consistency with that branding, um, which would mean that you wouldn't be changing it as often unless it was within your branding guidelines yeah i, I um, just say make it like make it as simple and clean and easy for yourself as possible and just say what it, it is and call it a day yeah they mentioned yep. earlier they mentioned earlier that they um that they're a graphic designer that they make like uh you know headers and thumbnails and stuff like that so i think that they uh yeah, so 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 they should know that part, but um, but in terms of changing it, yeah, like I wouldn't even worry about we, that. We uh, graphic designers, and we speak from this background, gentlemen. It's like graphic designers overthink everything in YouTube, and we overvalue that skill set in YouTube. Clarity is more important than being clever. Graphic designers, we like to be clever. We like to show off. Clarity, keeping it simple and clean and minimalist, is the real answer man. for these platforms. At the end of the day, clarity over it, cleverness. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yep, nice. A plus Russian says, what's a good mix of videos to post like VOD, short, short, VOD, short, VOD. Um, should there be a cadence at all? Absolutely. Um, in my opinion, I think that you should have a cadence of some kind, not just for the platform itself. That's a part of it, but also um, for your own sake. Because, you know, when it comes to consistency and creating a cadence with like how you're creating content and how you're uploading it, it kind of ensures the sustainability of what it is that you're doing because you carve out a place in your lifestyle to ensure that you're continually making the content that you need to make in order to keep the whole thing going. So um, so because of that, I think that having, you know, a steady cadence of that is definitely something to consider in terms of like video, video, short, short, video, short. Um, I would just do it based on, you know, what you enjoy making and also by like what I'm doing right now, just for, you know, transparency and what I'm experimenting with is um, when I'm putting out shorts, I'm using them more as like supplemental content. So, you know, I'm putting them out because one, um, it helps me just with this particular channel, use that feature. Um, but in addition to that, it's like supplemental content. So it's like, hey, I put this out. Here's an extra, you know, piece of value for people that's like a quick hit. Um, it also pushes me into new audiences, which is a win. And um, in addition to that, it's a piece of content. So it creates activity on the channel. So I'm using them more as supplemental content to get an additional upload in. And by doing that, you know, it's increasing the overall view counts on the channel over the course of, you know, the month because those help to do that. So when it comes to the cadence of which, you know, thing you should put out, I would just do it based on, you know, the things that you enjoy and yeah. how you, you know, want to, um, you know, like if you can make an extra short, that will give you an extra, you know, 5,000 views or 10,000 views or 100,000 or 500,000 views, depending on, you know, what it is you're making. Um, yeah. If you can do that and that keeps adding to that bottom line over the course of the month in terms of your growth, then it's a win, right? So a I'd thousand. Just, just consider that. A thousand percent. Um, do we have more of these? These are good questions. These are super good questions. Do we have more of? Uh... We we do. So okay. next one up is having um, 28,000 subscribers in five years. Good. It's fantastic. Most people don't make it that far. So the fact that you have 28,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel, <clears throat> excuse me, regardless of how long it took you, um, you're actually you're actually doing um, you're actually doing pretty awesome. No matter what, 10,000 subscribers is the only like I know everyone likes play buttons and all this other stuff. The only thing that matters if you're a small creator in terms of wanting to feel like have I made it is the only thing that you need to think about is crossing the threshold to be monetized on YouTube. And then after that, the only stretch goal that matters is 10,000 subscribers because less than 90% of creators get 10,000 subscribers. If you get into the top 10% of any career, any industry, if you were a top 10% performer in any career, any industry, you would say you're successful and no one would debate it and everyone else would say you're successful. The problem is that no one understands and believes that to be in the top 10% of YouTube, you only need 10,000 subscribers. And the reason they don't know that is because they don't know the numbers. That's why I tweet the data and the numbers. There are 100 million channels. 
There are not even a million people with a play button, not even a silver play button. There's only 300,000 worldwide, 4,500 of those in the U.S. alone. And as far as a million subscribers is making it, no, it's not. A million subscribers, you might as well be a billionaire because at a million subscribers, there are only globally about 30,000 content creators globally that have a gold play button. And then out of those people, there's only about um, 5,500 U.S. channels that have a gold play button. So you might as well be a billionaire as far as that kind of thing, you know, and as far as 10 million subscribers, that's only 1100 channels globally worldwide. And half of those are like WWE and Conan and Ellen and so on and so forth. So again, you're talking about being multimillionaires or billionaires in terms of the value proposition, the level also in terms of who you're competing with, who you're competing with. If you get to 10 million subscribers, you're competing with individuals that all have eight figure net worths, and corporations that have billion dollar um, pipelines. So that's what 10 million is. If you're competing and you're like, I want a million subscribers, uh, having a million subscribers is competing with people who make seven or eight figures. So that's not making it. That's not making it. And then in terms of a silver play button with 100,000 subscribers, you're talking about people who make multiple six figures or low seven figures. Making it on YouTube is 10,000 subscribers period, being a successful channel, regardless of what, and most businesses take five to seven years to get off of the ground. So 10,000 subscribers, that's success. That's it. And yes, 10% of all- Yeah, Jerry play says 10% probably of the play buttons from YouTube belong to Daryl Eves. Uh, that's probably that's true at this point. That's probably <laughs> true at this point, to be very real with you. Hey, so. speaking of, hey, Nick, since I'm uploading again, do you think you could find it in your heart to find my play button and give it to me? I will. Yep, I'll go dig that out. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there's so. like um, there's only three million monetized channels in YouTube. There's a hundred million channels worldwide. Currently, there's only about three, like just about three million globally, globally in the partner program. So it's extraordinarily difficult to get into the YouTube partner program for most people globally. Super Tur Hill review says I I make uh, TV and movie reviews. My significant other was wondering if channel focus should be more narrow, um, but most critics reviewers do both. Um, what do you think? What, what was the question? Either one of you. you, you um, says I me. make TV you and movie reviews. Me, you My significant others was wondering um, if I should focus. My focus should be more narrow. Basically, they do TV and movie. They're curious if they should oh. just focus on movies or TV. Man, I, just my input from a viewer. I would love a place where I can just stay up on the latest things on the streaming networks. Like since the pandemic happened, I've just gone 99% streaming everything. And my girlfriend and I, we, you know, we had, it used to be movie night. Now it's like we have streaming night where we just binge watch the holy crap out of stuff. And like sometimes you run out that's of things, a lot. Like, you know, a, the, the, dude, like binge watching the holy crap out. I mean, whoo. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. Like Indian cows, they're Indian cows, right? They're all, it's holy crap. So like sometimes when a series ends and you we're all mean, caught up, like, what are we gonna watch cows? now? Yeah, sacred cows. So yeah, when a series ends, we're like, well, what are we gonna watch next? And then I go to Google and like, what do I watch? And I'm just bombarded with all these cheap blogs with all these advertising, I don't, I don't trust these. I would love a channel that was like on the level and was like, this is what's happening now on these various streaming platforms, but that's just me. I would make, yeah, I would make, I would sit there and I'd go at like, what's Netflix featuring at the top of the banner for Netflix when you log in? And the same thing for Hulu. If I was a TV oh, show man, reviewer, if I was a TV show reviewer, I would cut out all of my extra expenses and all my other hobbies, everything but my gym membership. Um, and I would say, I'm going to subscribe to HBO Max, um, Hulu, and uh, Netflix, and maybe even one of the other lesser uh oh, oh apple tv for sure apple tv plus for sure and then maybe something like um uh peacock or paramount or whatever that is or paramount plus or whatever it is and so i would go with the top streaming platforms and then i would be covering whatever they're advertising the most and oh and amazon prime and i would go with everything that they're advertising anything that they're putting a budget behind that's what I would be covering. That's why I would be covering as a TV reviewer. And then in terms of movies, I would do movies once in a while. I would do the movies once in a while, but I would look at the movies that are being advertised the most or have the most controversy or critical acclaim or whatever it is. And I would do that because I know that there are people going to be searching for that. People are going to be looking for that. People are going to be subliminally messaged on it. They're going to see it every time they walk out of the house, every time they flip on a screen. I would be looking at that exclusively 
because I know that people immediately recognize these things and recognize these characters. I would use their face in the thumbnail instead of mine. I would be really focusing on what is being advertised and put in front of people's eyeballs the most. And I would be focusing making my TV and movie reviews around that just completely exclusively. And by the way, for anyone who covers product reviews, I would just do the same strategy and look at whatever's being advertised the most in Amazon or whatever's new and in the storefront at Best Buy or Walmart or Michaels or Hobby Lobby, if you're doing, depending on what you're reviewing, your product reviewing. So that's my strategy for reviewing anything. Nice. Take so it. our next question that we have here um, on this list is should everyone start using YouTube shorts? I don't think so. Um, I think that it's it's something that you you know should consider, but it might not be appropriate for what it is that you're putting together. I mean, in most cases, you're going to be able to find something that you can make a short out of. Um, but I, I would say that there's probably some types of content out there that it might not be the best move. Um, yeah. However, um, most likely there is something that you can do in YouTube shorts. But one thing to think about is right now, if you're only making long form content on YouTube, you can only currently tap into all of the traffic that's happening on those long form pages um, or you know within the app when it comes to shorts if you choose not to do them then you are missing the opportunity to tap into a lot more people because that that you know like a whole other group of people are interacting there and that gives you a chance to get in front of some of those people so because of that if you're not using them then you could be costing yourself an opportunity um, but you do have to consider like how much time do i have you know how much time can i apply to it you know what it is that i'm doing here is this appropriate for my content can i come up with something based on the type of content that i make that would be a good short um so you know it's definitely something to consider without question because we're moving in that direction i mean we're there we're not moving in that direction we're there so it's definitely something to consider but i would say that it's not something that literally everyone should post but it's definitely something that everyone should consider and try to think about I, how I, they could tap into it i think every so, small youtuber has nothing to lose by trying it yeah I, yeah i want to add to this so i i think the question of should i do youtube shorts is i think you should try it the next question is what type of shorts should i make and maybe shorts won't apply to the type of content that i make so here's what i recommend that you do go to youtube and put in your niche start typing in keywords that are relevant to your niche and see if you can find shorts with people who are doing well doing what it is that you want to do and look at how they do it and do the same thing over at TikTok. go to TikTok, open up the search feature put in keywords try to find people who are doing things that you're doing with your niche with your channel and say how are they doing shorts look at look at how quickly they get to and i'm not talking about don't look, don't look at videos that are not performing well look at the ones that are doing well look at how they bring it in with the intro look at their hook look at how long it is look at their presentation look at the pacing and say okay see if you can find patterns with different people who are creating within your niche with short form content so you know that that's kind of where you need to get in and it will give you content ideas rather than saying oh it doesn't apply to my channel i guarantee you all three of us if you throw 99 percent of the channels maybe 100 channels at us we could probably each come up with 10 ideas off the top of our head of shorts that you could make so it's just a matter of kind of reframing your brain into understanding how to make a short and then it comes into the data. What does your audience respond to? Exactly. I, I think that's you, you hit it on the head, uh, D. Nick, you say this all the time. YouTube is a game of response rather than reach. Reach will yeah. happen. You can see the impressions. Did you get a response from that reach? It doesn't do good to have all the opportunity. This is why I don't believe in luck. You have all the opportunity in the world. It doesn't matter if you have all this reach to people. We put you in the middle of Madison Square Garden. Well, you could flop. The opportunity was worthless. So you need to have a response. If we put you in a small room, but everyone loves you, then that's better than being in Madison Square Garden and failing. It's better to succeed. It's better to succeed in front of a group. Uh, it's better to succeed in the town square than to fail in Carnegie Hall. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. So on that note, um, I want to thank everybody for hanging out in the stream today. I hope you got value from the information that was shared here. Um, Dee and Roberto, thank you for coming on and, you know, sharing your insights um, and, and you're in the heat, you know, as well. Super, uh, super, you know, fun there. Yes, yeah, so this has been a, definitely an awesome stream. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so thank you everybody fact. so much for hanging out. And for the um, you know information that you hear during these streams, like if you're just getting started, some of it can seem like it's overwhelming, or that there's like a huge mountain that you have to climb. And you know there there is you know a mountain that you have to climb in terms of you know the learning curve and developing all the skills and understanding you know when it comes to YouTube. So if you did get a lot of information, you're not really sure where to start. Just pick something. 
and just start trying to understand that thing a little bit better. Start trying to apply some of the, the information to the videos that you're making. And by doing those and take, or by doing that and taking those steps, that's how you, you know, make that progress. And, you know, of course, continue to keep doing the thing. And as you keep learning and keep applying, you're going to start getting all kinds of insights on the things that you start doing that work and the things that you start doing that don't. And that will, you know, help you go in the right direction. So again, thank you, um, Dee and Roberto for coming on. Thank you everybody for hanging out. Have an awesome rest of your weekend and um, we will see you next time. Oh, and really quick, I've got um, D. It, same last name. Um, you can find him in YouTube search. I, I might have a link to him down in the description. I'm not sure. Roberto Blake. Um, if you just type Roberto Blake into YouTube or Google, all roads lead to Rome there as well. But I also have a link to Roberto's book um, down in the description also. Um, so if you are interested in getting more you know, insights from Roberto or D, you can find them um, just hopping into YouTube search or Google. Um, so you can you know find out more about them as well. So again, thank you so much for hanging out and I will see you next time. Bye.